Have I never sneezed on the pencast before? I don't know if I have. I don't know. I feel like if I had, then we would We'd know. remember it. We'd remember it because it would peak the audio <laughs> on both our mics. It'd be the, it'd so be the only time your audio would overdo mine. Every time when Joseph was born as like an infant and we had him like in the little carrier, like the swing or something mm -hmm. like that, awake or asleep, every time I would sneeze, it would freak him out and he'd start crying because, I, you know. I feel like I might He eventually start got crying. used to it. He eventually got used to it, but yeah, it would make Rachel, Rachel real happy. But I can't sneeze quiet. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't work. For this guy yeah i can't sneeze <laughs> quiet but i mean i feel like it's as minimal as it could be yeah i'm not, not i'm not an aggressive sneezer oh i'm aggressive <laughs> i'm as aggressive as they come when it comes to sneezing oh okay. right. are you ready? ready i think so. hey okay yeah, okay all right let me uh turn off my notifications so nobody bothers us and yeah you ready Welcome, everybody, to episode number 90 of the Goulet Pencast. Drew, we're in the 90s now. hey oh, pretty, pretty rad, pretty cowabunga, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> 90 is pretty cowabunga. It's I getting think. there. I mean, getting 90 there. is exactly cowabunga, because that's the year the first Ninja Turtle movie came out. Boom. It doesn't get go. more cowabunga than that. It that still was, holds that, up, by the way. That was the first movie I saw in the theater. It was rad. That I remember. It was tubular. That's right. Bossa Nova. Um, anyway, Goulet Pencast, that's where fountain pens are still a thing. I am Brian Goulet. I am Drew Brown. And we're here from Goulet Pens to deliver this casual and informal, tangential and extraneous, superfluous and extemporaneous fountain pen show, where we talk about the Goulet Pen Company and what's going on in our fountain pen lives. In today's show, we're going to be talking about the strangest pen shapes that we've ever seen. Should be interesting. Um, favorite pens that we don't sell. Mm-hmm. Uh, best next level pens for university graduates. I guess it's that season where mm. people are thinking about it is that. It's the season. Um, we're going to be talking about ebonite versus plastic feeds. We have a guest, and I kind of went on an accidental deep dive. The guest caused the guest. you to deep the dive. The guest pushed me down the crevasse, <laughs> and I crawled down deeper. Um, and then the last pens that we personally bought, not for work. I'll be honest, this was a hard one to answer because I buy a lot of pens for work. I had to go back a bit. Anyway, do. and then we're going to play a blindfolded pen guessing game because we haven't done that in a while. Except we're not going to blindfold ourselves. We're, we couldn't find We couldn't find our blindfolds. So we're, we're just going to close, close our eyes and look up into the It'll be a trust-based a trust -based system. Anyway, that's what we got going on today. It should be a fun one. And we'll start it off with some feedback. All right. Uh, let me just start off by saying thank you so very much for your YouTube comments. I read all of them. I love all of them and they just fill me with delight and joy. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could respond to absolutely every one of them, either in the comments or here. Um, but I feel like if I did, it'd just be like, I would have to be really short and disingenuous about it. And I don't want to do that, but um, I really, really enjoy it. And um, everybody who takes the time to comment on something, like, cause I'm not a big commenter, uh, but yeah, so if I comment, looper, I really looper. do. I am, but, but yeah. I really respect the time. Cause they don't have to do that. They don't have to click oh. the extra button. The internet is such a fast moving thing. Mm -hmm. And the fact that so many people take the time to just say totally hi cool. and to have conversations with us, with each other. That's cool. I want you to know it genuinely, genuinely is appreciated from us. Yeah. So getting that out there and then moving on to Amelia Buns 4058 <laughs> says, my tip for passion, take a break and force yourself to use black ink and a cheap pen for a while. Ooh, so last week my. we talked about how do we maintain passion for decade plus, you know, years of working in the fountain pen industry. Mm -hmm. um, Amelia's suggestion is to deprive yourself of the joy of fountain pens okay. for a while. Okay. So you come crawling back in sorrow. Hey, there's something to be said for that. There's, yeah, I, I don't disagree with that, Amelia. Mm. Uh, Raven the Light says, Drew, I have done everything you did. This was my segment, the one-time segment, ADHD or dumb yeah, uh, from right. last time. So Raven the Light is actually uh, with me here. Yeah, Drew, I've done everything you did. I have gone to a gas station twice, not having my card. I have done hey. the fluffy pants thing. That was me saying like my shirt was too tight for my pants or my pants were too tight for my shirt. Yeah. I had to swap Okay, off. I was wondering what that was. I was like, yep. did I miss something? Fluffy pants, can't okay. have fluffy pants. If you want a fluffy pants, you gotta have a fluffy shirt, vice versa. Okay. Just balance it out. Uh, I've done the fluffy pants thing and I have spilled my coffee under the oven. I would say it is ADD brother or I am dumb too, <laughs> which really could be the case. You guys are awesome. I feel so much better knowing I'm not the only one who has these kinds of problems. Mm. Thank you so much. I feel better knowing that you're out there as well. And there were other people in the comments as well. So uh, yeah. at least we're in this together, right? Thank you. <laughs> Sarah says, <laughs> I love this one. Sarah and a couple other people, and as a matter of fact, said, mm. my eye used to squeak when I rubbed it. 
and then randomly stopped for no discernible reason. If Shannon knows why that happens, I'd be interested to know. Uh, if you miss the very important fact that my wife's eyeball squeaked when she rubs it, I did speak about that last week, and then uh, realized during the pencast, wait a second, it doesn't squeak anymore. So I went home, talked to Shannon. I was like, hey, did your eyeball still squeak when you rub it? And she, no, it doesn't. When did that stop? I was like, I know, right? I hadn't heard it for a while. She's like, that's so weird. Why did it stop? So we're just befuddled. Wow. Her squeaky eye just went away. Because remember, I said, yeah. I said, I'm like, I, I feel like it doesn't squeak anymore. I haven't heard it in a while. She had no idea it stopped. But then. You just like had kind of observed. Yeah. But Sarah also had squeaky eye and it stopped. But Shannon's went on for years, Brian. Wow. This wasn't just like a flash in the pan squeaky eye. Yeah. This was a. You know, you just get so used to it after a while. Yeah, but Sarah had the squeaky eye too, and then and huh. two people said, um, "Wait, hold on, was this mother?" Uh, no, no, two people in the comments said their mom had squeaky eye. Like two moms out there had squeaky eye. <laughs> I don't know. Never heard of this before. You mentioned it. I didn't know it was a thing, but apparently wow. it's not as uncommon as I thought. The so. internet bringing people together. Yes, and this is just a unpredictable the, ways. The feedback section is often just a delightful reminder of how we stay so well on topic. I was gonna say it's really like holding up a mirror to how we guide these conversations. I'm like, is this? Is this really yeah. what we're talking no, about? <laughs> granted, I could have I could have chosen feedback that said, "Hey, I like the Lamy logo." True, true. It is a bit. So, it's there, about self-selective. Yeah, here. but yeah. these are the entertaining it's ones. The more, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so my first piece of feedback here, I don't know who it's from. No, this is, did you write that? Yeah, Thank this, you for all the fiction book recommendations. Yeah, because you got a lot of those. Oh, in the comments from yeah. other people. Okay. I thought it was a comment from somebody. No, no, no. Thanking for my fiction book recommendations. No. And I was like, is that, that's got to be a joke. No, right? you yeah. got a lot of good fiction recommendations. Okay. And uh, cool. I will never get to them. I'm sure you'll look I, at every I'm not last even going to get your them. hopes up that I'm going to read them. They're not going to happen. Someone recommended Jurassic Park for you since you were wearing a Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park by Michael Crichton. Yeah. Okay. I was wearing a you're Top a Gun shirt. Should you're I, a big like, fan. Watch, there's no Top, top Gun novelization. Book? Well, I mean, I'm sure there's a novelization, but Michael Crichton wrote Jurassic Park before the movie came out. There's some fan fiction out there. Probably. Michael Crichton, that's going to be a thick book man i hear it's a That's good a problem. read fiction books are too long well what are you, someone what are you doing there were multiple people They're that so also long. recommended short stories for you <sighs> this all just sounds like a lot of work <laughs> none of this is appealing to me i don't know why i like it's not that i don't like fiction i like it sounds things. like you don't like fiction. I, love, I don't really watch movies i like tv shows i guess there's that i don't you know you like one tv show i'm really lazy <laughs> I like Severance and Third. You're Rock. not. You're not lazy, Brian. You put forth <laughs> way more effort in your life than True. I do. You're, you I'm just... lazy about my leisure. Does that make sense? It does actually. <laughs> it's a bizarrely fa I, factual thing for you to say. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I can't explain you it. You are lazy about being lazy. It's. It's. I don't know. I don't know what. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not a strong reader. So like, it actually is work for me to read fiction. You can listen. Like, to it them, is Brian. not leisurely to me. That's why I listen I to most it. most of my fiction books. I guess I could do that. I mean, I listen to like podcasts and audiobooks and all kinds of other. Keep things. the pressure up, people. Next time you see him at a, see him at a pen show, all right. Don't make him regret this. Should I listen to an audio book of a book that there's a movie of? I'm like, I won't watch a movie, but I'll listen to an audio book of the book of the movie. I'm sure there's something out there that you'll mm. enjoy. You just gotta get it dialed in. Talk to somebody who has similar preferences to you and find okay. out find out what they like. Okay. All right. We'll see. We will severance fan fiction out there. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, okay, B, uh, let's see here. B mused shaman says, "I cracked up when Brian said, what's the problem with that?' After Drew complained about bacon smoke flavoring the oven cinnamon rolls, you guys are a hoot. Why would you want bacon flavored cinnamon buns? Bacon flavored dot dot dot. It just sounds great. Bacon I mean, and cinnamon. Well, I guess there's yeah. very few things that bacon I can think will of, not enhance. I can think of in worse my, things. In my opinion. I can think of worse things for bacon to attack than a cinnamon roll, sure. I guess. Sure. I don't know. I've never I've never had it. I'm just speculating. But anyway. Um KSEC says, I know y'all do not care at all, but the Richmond Flying Squirrels are indeed double A. Two levels down. I was thinking they had there was MLB. an A denotation of some sort involved. I knew there were letters involved. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't even bother to double look them up. Double A. Double A. Yep. Baseball. Like, like game the battery. Team. Like the battery. Yep. yep. I've seen them from time to time here in Ohio since they're in the same division as the Akron Rubber Ducks, who I believe they were playing today. Really? That's the game that neither of us went to. Maybe. Uh no, no. That was Oh, I don't know. Maybe and they're playing today. Oh, maybe they didn't comment on yeah, the day we published day. it. They travel around. But okay. anyway, I know that 
whatever a lot team, of baseball games happen. They I never played too many games too. I never would, I, I, I know it. whatever team they did play, they lost. So <laughs> the, Who, the, the flying, flying squirrels, squirrels did not win. Yeah. Oh, that's. But I mean, it happens. These, mi- these minor league teams got some crazy names. They do have some pretty wild names. Yeah. Flying squirrels versus the rubber ducks. That's pretty fun. It sounds pretty funny. It is fun. Um, and then 907 Big Dog says, great pen cast. You guys crack me up. This really is the first online community that I've experienced that stays positive. I was just wondering about the possibility of adding nib size to your technical specs. You know, whether it's a number five, number six, eight, or other companies' sizes too. I mean, we could <sighs> we could we've, do. We've talked about this. We have. We could do like we don't, pilot. We, we don't nib currently. Size. We don't currently have this as a feature. Part of the challenge with this is there's some standard sizes and mm-hmm. there's some that are not quite standard sizes. And then there's some that are standard sizes, but the manufacturer but the is manufacturer not comfortable with you telling people tweaks it's them. standard yeah, sizes. The, the big problem is there's no clear way in like a drop down filter sort of mechanism to sort and filter them by like interoperability, you know? Yeah. So it's like you might have ones that are around a number five size. So it's like, if you like that general shape and size of a nib, but it doesn't mean that ones that are that size will be interchangeable with each other. Yeah. And I know that that's a lot, a lot of people would want to like interpret them and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, swappability and accessibility. Yeah, we not could, to mention there's n- a lot of different size options. It would get really confusing. Like, you know, Pilot does have their own total yeah. on numbering system. We could do that because that is pretty cut and dry, but we also take close up photos of all the nibs too, so you can just see it there. Yeah, it's, we're, we're talking about it. What we might What we might end up doing rather than having a filter through the site because there's just there's just too much nuance to it um is we might end up making it more into like a blog article type of thing and then we can explain in more detail you know which nibs are the same and which yeah. ones aren't so we're worth we're, we're throwing that yeah. idea right now it is but, pretty involved though yeah i do understand the desire for it i myself have desired having it on the site so yeah. that i just even i can reference it easier so very good thought. We're going to keep talking about it internally, but it's more complicated than it seems. But anyway, um, we have a little bit of new stuff to talk about, and then we'll dive into Q&A. Drew, we are in a bit of a dry spell here with some new stuff. Well, Not we, totally, but it's... We are you know, and we aren't. It's like, you know, we've got some stuff happening, but it's kind of selling out too fast for us to talk about <laughs> yeah, it. That is true. Yeah. That is true. We have some limited edition stuff, and it's like, you know, we have to temper how much we talk about certain yeah. things. I mean, we'll let you know in, about it, but... We, um, we were in a way for a while on the podcast where it's like, we were mentioning things and like almost every week something was selling oh, out. Oh, the logo sold out now. Time. Yeah. Really? Well, we only kept a We didn't have that stock, many of them. Yeah. Right, because no one cares about it. Right. So and then we, talked we about mention it. it and then like the, you know, three that we had, <laughs> gone, you know. It was more than that, but still, it's it's not a very popular I don't think pen. it was. It's, we didn't have a lot on hand. No, I think when I when I went to pull the one from the pen cast, I think there was, was like slim three pickings? in there. Yeah, okay. very slim pickings. Fair enough. Um, okay, well, the things that we do have, this, I'm going to talk about it. It might be sold out by the time Friday rolls around. It might around, be sold out. But it did launch on Monday. It did happen. We've sold a good portion of them. If it's still around on Friday, go pick it up immediately. What because is it? not going to be around. It is our Franklin Kristoff. Model 31, Andromeda. Andromeda. So is, we basically get to do like one pet a year with Franklin Kristoff. Yeah. And it's limited. You know, they primarily sell direct. They will sell through like certain retailers who they work with like maximum one pen a year. So it all depends on them and their capacity. So we're fortunate to be able to do it. We've done, how many is this now? Four or five? I, I can't remember exactly how many it is, but th- we've done several with them. Yeah. Um, so... We've done the Model 31. Every time. Every time. It's like, it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, so classically known Franklin Kristoff model. We like it. A bunch of range of nib sizes. I'm not going to talk about it too much, but the material is really cool. It's like this iridescent kind of material. It goes from like a bluish green to like a purple. It looks wild. Drew did a little GIF, GIF. GIF, GIF. Whatever, GIF, GIF, GIF. Yeah. Um, on the site just because it helps. So that's all I'm going to talk about. It's 195 Go get it if you haven't gotten it already. Uh, and then we have the Mayora Ojiba. This one is available without any caveats. It is. So this is uh, from Mayora. This is made in Italy. Uh, we have three different colors. We have a blue, a brown, and an orange. So a little over 300 bucks for this one. This is a steel nib. And um, yeah, I don't know. 
Looks pretty pretty cool. pretty interesting uh, color yeah. variations. You know, nice rich color depth and some, yeah. some some shimmery sparkly things happening, but not too much. It's yeah, a, the materials uh, it's definitely interesting. I wouldn't you know I wouldn't call it like over the top, but it's it's complex. It's near the top. Yeah, it's near, near the it's top. Near the top. Yeah, floating towards the top. <laughs> yeah, you feel like you're getting a, a fancier pen than your average. For sure, it's got yeah. a lot. It's got a good weight to it too. Yeah, it is. It's very solid. Yeah, very, very solid. solid. They are good about that. So anyway, that's all um, I got, Drew. What about you? Well, we're adding another friend to the Line Friends collection Ooh. by Sailor. So we've had the Brown okay. and the Sally, the Bear and the Duck, mm -hmm. I believe. Yep. Um, Sally's Duck. So uh, joining them is going to be Connie, and mm -hmm. it's a Bunny, it's a, a bunny, bunny rabbit, a pink and white pen with a little bunny face on the pink finial. It's pretty adorable. So it is pretty adorable. Um, and like the Andromeda, stock is questionable at this time. <laughs> uh, when this pen cast airs, it will most likely be gone because we did not have too many to start with. Yeah. However, unlike the Andromeda, more are on the way. Yeah. So. You can sign up to be notified when it's back in stock, and we will email you and say, mm -hmm. hey, come get your Coney. Yep. And that is $312 in the Pro Gear Slim model. And this one's not exclusive to us. It's a North American exclusive, it right? It is. Yeah. So other retailers have it. We'll, I think, be able to restock it. Yeah. We just, you know, probably sold them yep. a little quicker than we thought, which is how it goes sometimes. Indeed, we did. Cool. And that's right. it for the new stuff. But again, like we said last week, check the coming soon section mm -hmm. because we have some rad pens coming down the pipeline. We do indeed. All right, that's it for the new stuff. Let's uh, let's take some questions. We got an interesting bunch this week. All right, okay. question <laughs> one from our old friend Imperator Lucius mm -hmm. is asking us, what is the strangest shaped pen you have seen? The Jinhao Dragon, for example. <sighs> The Jinhao Dragon is a strong it is. start. That's a strong example. I will say Jinhao's, Jinhao Dragon is probably the strangest, most affordable pen out there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, bang for the buck in terms of strangeness for for your dollar. Yeah. That one is up there. There we go. Um, in fact, as I was reading the question initially before I got to like the Jinhao Dragon, for mm -hmm. example, in parentheses, the first pen to pop into mind was the Jinhao Dragon. And yeah. I was like, Jinhao Dragon, for example, I was like, oh, same wavelength. There we go. So definitely that one. Um, so I had I came up with some that are some that are like a little less crazy, just like more interesting, kind of unconventional. And then I went like a little crazier. Okay. And I felt kind of bad about this one because like I know I've been to like pen shows and stuff and seen some more like one off kind of like wacky stuff. Mm -hmm. I just can't like recall exactly what they are. So I don't feel confident that I have like the most impressive list yeah. to go off of here. I've, I've seen some crazy materials, but like as far as a shape goes, yeah. like that that that's where I'm sticking with. I'm sticking okay. with the actual shape. Okay. And like I the, guess it, the, the question can be interpreted a lot of different ways. Yeah. So I'll explain myself as to all the different things. And I tried to stick with ones that would be like somewhat recognizable or like that we might be able to get a picture of cool. so that I'm not just like talking about something I halfway remember from years ago, and then you're like, it's very thoughtful of you. Just make that up. Um, so for one, maybe not so crazy, or like crazy in a good way, I'll say like complex or unconventional. I think the Visconti Divina, because it is got a lot of interesting things happening. And just from like thinking about it in terms of a des like pen design and manufacturing process, it is like definitely a complex pen. So it's a, it's a faceted pen that is five-sided. So a pentagonal facet, which already is pretty unusual, but then it's tapered in its like, you know, the cap is thicker and then like the body itself even tapers to the tip. So you have facets of an unconventional number. It's tapered. Is it tapered? Mm-hmm. Oh, it tapers. It's not tapered very much. And it twists. Mm-hmm. And it has inlays. So it's got like a multitude of things. Any one of those things are like, oh, that's kind of an interesting component, but it combines all of them together. Yeah, for me, that is just a very interesting shape. I've always kind of been like, oh, this Davina is like, kind of just like stands apart in hmm. a lot of different ways for me. So I've always liked the Davina for that way. So it's, again, it's not like a, crazy pen. Yeah, definitely not. It's more it's more subtle, but it's like when it's you really study the pen. It's probably more crazy in its 
manufacturing complexity than its yeah. outward appearance. Yeah, you wouldn't look at it and be like, what a whacked out pen. Yeah. But it's like, oh, that's actually, there's a lot going on there that yeah. you don't quite realize. Mm -hmm. So it's a pen that like I've really learned to appreciate over the years. Um, I'm gonna go completely other direction of just something very simple. I think the Jinhao Shark is a pretty crazy design. That's I mean, pretty crazy. The cap yep. literally is a shark mm -hmm. with a fin. Uh, I think that's pretty fun. Definitely stands out quite a bit. And uh, also, kind of like the Jinhao Dragon, very economical strangeness for your dollar. That's true. Um, uh, I put this one here. I don't know. We can debate about this one. I think the Diplomat Arrow kind of qualifies as a pretty you're going, you're, strange you're, you're going light. I am going light. Again, you're going light. I'm These... starting light. I'm starting light. Okay. I'm getting I'm getting there. But... I'm, I'm easing easing into it, right? Yeah, I don't think that's too wild, but it's not but too continue. crazy. It's not too, too crazy, but when you really think about it, it's a pretty unique pen that like Zeppelin shape. Yeah. But then with the flutes and all that kind of stuff, especially like when you look at any of the uh, like the stripe or any of those ones that like really contrast. Wouldn't you say that the wouldn't you say the Zepp would be a better choice though? Oh yeah, that Zep is pretty wild. Yeah, see, this that, I'm like not remembering certain yeah, things. Like yeah, like that's way more wild the than Zep the Arrow limited edition. Yeah, that one, that one has all the wackiness of the Arrow, but then more. Okay, that is a better choice. Yep, fair enough. I did this pretty late last night. I was not, <laughs> I was not firing on all my cylinders. Um, and then I think the Lamy Dialogue, and there's, we have the Dialogue Three because that's a fountain pen. But that's, there's that's pretty there's wacky a Dialogue one. Two and there's a Dialogue One, mm. and they are also pretty crazy looking pens. Mm. Again. You know they're not designed to be weird looking, but they are they are unconventional design pens. But I think any of those could qualify. So those are all those are all very subtle, like kind of just like normally offered pens that I think are interesting. Um, but then you get into like the stranger ones. I think the Banu Scepter is is pretty strange. Banu has a few. Banu's got a, f a few, but as I was looking at them, I was like the Scepter to me. Stands out. Or the Grand Scepter. The weird, or the Grand Scepter. Even bigger, just yeah. a bigger one. Yeah, but just like that shape, it doesn't post. And it just, you know, especially when you. It's when just you, a wand. Yeah. It, it, and of course, the material itself looks pretty looks pretty wild. Um, and then, like, gosh, like pretty much any like limited edition pen, like especially I saw a couple that you had on here, like the Montegrappas, they've had probably some of the wildest shaped pens yeah. because they like have some that they've even like almost made into action figures. Yes. You know, they're like very much not a shape of an actual pen. No. Um, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, ones that they've actually incorporated the design into it. Like when they did the moon landing one that was like the shape yeah. of the Saturn it's V a rocket. rocket. That's super cool. Yeah. You know, so I definitely appreciate that. Uh, of course, we've talked about like the chaos pen and the pirate pen. Those are, that's like the Jin Hell Dragon like turned up to 11. They're so beautiful. They are they are magnificent in their strangeness. Um, so I would say like most any Montecrappa. Yeah, any Limited Montecrappa edition, LA. Like yeah. that's, that's pretty much what I can think of like as being some of the They've got one shapes. shaped like a revolver that you could put bullets into. Like it's it's really It's bad. really wild. It's really wild. Yeah. So again, I feel like I could have answered some of these questions better, but that's that's what I that's what I have. Montegrappa is a pretty good one. You actually reminded me of a few. Mm. Um, you reminded me of one via omission though, because you didn't oh. mention any Paniders. And Paniders has some, some interesting. Wacky, they're they're Back to the some. Future pen looks that really pretty, weird. That was pretty interesting. Really wacky. That that turny knob in the mm. back and that stacked, you know, carbon situation happening mm -hmm. and the sharp cuts in the side. That that's a pretty wacky that's one. Pretty but interesting. so many of the uh, the Armand series were all wackadoodle too. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. those cuts and hollow portions <laughs> like that's those. True. Those, wild. yeah, for a shape that you can just kind of see through like that, those those are mm. insane. And it's then like a cool you, display too. Yeah, too. and you mentioned Banu, and I think we have to talk about the parrot. Oh yeah, because <laughs> the Banu parrot. Banu's had a lot of crazy shapes, but uh, yeah. that that parrot is uh, next level crazy. It is. We never actually we never... carried that one, yeah, but. We, we definitely got know. our hands on it for, I a, go, for a I got a couple in my collection, yeah. Um, and the uh, stipula retractable nibs, that's called the Da Vinci, right? Yes. So that's a, that pretty, a pretty interesting that's shape. That's a pretty too. odd shape because it's got a very bulbous grip section yeah. and a really wide waist, and then it tapers down. Tapers to the back, yeah. And it's really strange and unconventional yeah. way. Like just looking at that pen as a profile, like mm. it just looks more like a... Uh, sort of, sort of air compressor tool than a pen, like just a really strange it profile. It kind of does. It kind of does. Um, and a very wacky clip too. Yeah. Um, the first pen that I thought about when I heard this question was the Visconti Iopena. 
yeah. And that's the one with the wobbly. That thing is weird. That that like, I completely forgot about that. Yeah. And as soon as you mentioned it's that, got, I was like, that that might take a, the cake. On it's this got question. a weird like half like a face profile for the roll stop because it's not a clip. I don't think. Yeah. And it's got like this gummy rubber wobbly bendable bouncy. <laughs> it's pretty strange. Like end it's like, like a, it feels like a fishing lure. It's so bizarre. <laughs> it's so bizarre. So that one popped into my head at first, and um, and that one they they do several sell a fountain pen version of that and the rollerball. Okay. Ball. okay. Um, but then to your point, when you were mentioning action action when you were mentioning action figure yeah. pens from Montegrappa, mm. obviously we need to talk about these samurai and the Viking because oh, Montegrappa yeah. came out with these, and it's literally a silver and jewel embellished Viking man and samurai dude and you just rip off their torso and it's a pen <laughs> attached to their legs. And you're like writing with their disembodied you're, yeah, legs. Yeah, you're writing with their legs and um <laughs> that's pretty, their their that's pretty spine wild. that is now a pen. Wow. So those that's pretty strange. As far as a shape goes, I don't think that you could think of a pen, a fountain pen that is more distant a shape than a traditional pen than those two warrior pens. Like, yeah, because they really... There's no they're way... They're like disguising the fact that they're a pen. Exactly. There's no like, way, as far as a shape goes, a strange mm. shape, which mm. is what we're talking about, yeah. you couldn't see the profile of that and say, there is a fountain pen that looks farther like a fountain pen than these two. Like, I, I can't imagine... It just looks like something else. Yeah. It just looks like another thing. That's not a pen. Yeah. I think so that's that's a, that's a good one. Yeah, that that's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm sure we missed stuff though. Oh, there's absolutely. There's a lot of stuff out there that's been pretty crazy. And like you said, there's a lot of one-offs too. I'm mainly thinking yeah. of things that went into production. Yeah, yeah. Um, there there are definitely weirder pens out there for sure. But yeah. um, these were mostly mainstream companies that mm -hmm. put these pens into uh, at least some form of permanent yeah. production. And if you're like just yelling at your screen or at your phone right now then just leave a comment let us know yes because i'm sh I, I know i'm missing stuff if there's one that we I'm missed i will put it in the feedback section in next week for sure there you go cool all right i got a question this is from otisam okay uh favorite pens not sold by goulet hmm well the samurai pen for sure Montegrappa samurai pen <laughs> now um i'm gonna guess that we're talking about currently Chaos. available Pirate pens pen. like pens you can get other places right now but you can't get at goulet yeah i think we need some rails on this one because like yeah. obviously there's vintage pens yeah that, like, like obviously are on both of not us able gonna, to be sold both anymore. of us are going to say the m90 because because it's amazing we want to have that yeah but no one has that so. i think we should go with something like currently available currently available that just agree. like we don't yeah have as you could offering. get somewhere else on the internet okay um, uh, there, there's a company called the, uh, Kasama. They make, um, they're a small brand. They make some pens with funky materials. Um, they mm -hmm. make pens out of a material called Peak. Um, they make, uh, Ultem pens, but there's a material that they use in some of their pens that I have not seen any other pen company use. And it's a material called Torlon. And mm -hmm. I love the look of that. And it's a really, uh, um, like I think heat resistant and resilient type of, plastic and i just kind of want a pen made out of torlon also torlon sounds like a mortal Kombat character and i'm kind of here for it so uh yeah I'm, i've been following them for a while and i like that pen quite a bit and then um yeah uh shown design you know we've had some pens by ian shown but uh he also does some work with ultem which looks really cool but uh, almost, you know, most notably, he has created his own nib, the uh, Monarch nib. And that is mm -hmm. a feat of engineering, to say the least. I would really love to get my hands on one of those uh, one day. Uh, Gravitas pens as well. Um, makes a lot of good stuff. Uh, ben Walsh's vacuum filler is really cool looking. Monty Winfield, we used to carry some of them. Um, but he still makes some pens here and there. And uh, they still look great. He does work in forged carbon. He does work mm. in uh, linen micarta. And his machining is just a beauty to behold. And we could probably go really deep in talking about pens that are currently available in other countries. Mm. Like, for example, Pilot in Japan um, has had available a custom 845 in both <clears throat> blue and green. Ooh. They're both stunningly beautiful. Mm. And we can't get them here in the U.S. But that is just like the tip of the iceberg as far as what's available in Japan that we can't get. We could fill a whole, qualifies. we could fit a whole question we about. like put a lot of that into just like one whole bucket. Yeah, the, yeah. the stuff that is only in Japan. Like mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a whole bucket. And yeah, we um, want all of that basically. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> Conid, of course, um, we've mentioned mm -hmm. them before. Uh, they make great pens and um, they don't uh, sell through retailers. So that would be a cool, uh, that would be a cool one. That would be cool. And this one we used to carry, 
But my favorite brand of my favorite model of Edison pen, the Ascent, mm. is no longer available at the Goulet Pen Company. It's not available mm. anywhere else, though. No. But we could have. So we just we're kind need of breaking to... our own rules here. I, we, we had some guardrails on here. I mean, yeah. You just couldn't help yourself. That's though. true. Yeah. I just love the Ascent so much. <laughs> we we could carry it again. We just need to come up with a cool mm. material. Yeah. Um, and then this one's a little bit more off the rails as well. Mm. But Lamy has recently introduced a safari called the Balloon. And it is a demonstrator safari, a colored demonstrator safari mm -hmm. available only in Rollerball. And that mm. bums me out, Brian. I know. Because it's essentially a colored Vista, mm. but not available as a fountain pen. Is it Rollerball or Ballpoint? Or do they offer both Rollerball I, and Ballpoint? You know ballpoint? what? It might just be a Ballpoint. I think it might just be Ballpoint. Yeah. Which is like, if it was just Rollerball, I might be inclined to like, look, it's a cool color. Maybe we should just try it. Because we do have... A couple of roller balls. Yeah. Like Lamy 2000 and Raptor 51, mm -hmm. basically. Is yeah. that it? Is that all? I think that's all we have right that now. That is it. Yeah. But ballpoint, I'm like, that's eh, a bridge too far. That I can't, I can't far. get there. So I love those. I just, I really, <laughs> I hope they succeed enough that Lamy might consider making those as a fountain pen because. Let me uh, Lamy balloon. I'm just going to look that up and yeah. see. I would really, I think that, I mean, we know that safaris do really well we know that the vista does really well like mm -hmm. a colored version of the vista i think would do really well so okay it looks like there might ball. be a rollerball okay. version okay right, cool mm. i know i got a blue a, yeah blue green. green red or pink pink yeah so that would be nice oh, that blue's looking all right but uh alas mm. not available mm -hmm. currently what about you brian what do you okay. lament and think is um, cool that i like yours i think you have a lot of good choices there Again, to kind of reiterate, could be lots of vintage ones. Yeah. But we're going to not do that. So assuming, again, kind of still in production, uh, definitely Conid. Yeah. Uh, Shone's got the great stuff, Money Winfield. Uh, to add to that, kind of in like the small, smaller maker, you know, independent maker kind oh, of realm. I will say that I also um, didn't mention any individual pen turners that use, you know, resins. Sure. Because I could name 15 of them that I sure, think are sure. exceptional. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But of course, all of them as well. Yeah. Um, I'll add Canalea to yeah. that one. Uh, Ryan Krusak, Franklin Kristoff. We get to collaborate a little bit every now and then, but you know, certainly they have other offerings too. Uh, and then Yoshi Nakama of eighteen one eleven mm -hmm. does a lot of like cherry blossom designs and really cool stuff. Um, Rachel's got one of his pens, and so yeah, just you know, basically a lot of the independent makers yeah. really like supporting them. They make some cool stuff. They're very passionate. So I really like a lot of their stuff. It's just a lot of times it doesn't make sense for us to like sell and collaborate their stuff because they're just not at that scale to sell through retailers. Um, and then I'll throw this out there too. You know, Mont Blanc, 146, 149. Yeah. They're not solid like my pens. favorite pens of all time, but they are solid pens. I get why people like them. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't sell them and they're very good. And then of course, lots of Japanese and exclusives, Pilot and Sailor and stuff like that. Stuff that you can't get in the US basically. I pretty much want all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Makes me want it much more knowing that I, I can't know. have it. Especially because you can't have it, right? Yeah. Yep. You want it all. But yeah, that's what I got. All right. Cool. I'm of just course. realizing I'm realizing this week we're going to have like so many images to add for all these questions I we're know. answering. I'm I was like, go oh, find these. Crud. We're making a lot of work for ourselves. But yeah. Forgive us if we don't have pictures for some of these because I might know, not feel like it. Yeah. It's going to take a lot of time to yeah. all these. Anyway. Um, number three, <laughs> Margot Dag right. wants to know best next level pens as a gift for university grads university grads okay um you know I, when I, what goes through my mind with a university grad is like they're either somebody who's maybe not super into fountain pens but you are so you're gifting them one mm -hmm. but they might not really actually use it it might just be more of a keepsake so if that's the case i would lean more towards something that looks more like a trophy piece. Like the like dragon looks... pen. <laughs> Jin Hell Dragon, here you go. Yes, exactly. A dragon pen, you got it. Uh, no, kind of the opposite direction of that. Uh, you know, something that has a large pronounced nib that really looks like a fountain pen mm -hmm. that is not too obscure in its design or material, you know, kind of stick into something that, you know, somebody that's not that into pens would recognize as, you know, a fountain pen. I think that you don't need to overthink it if somebody's not super into fountain pens. Go with something that's a good, reliable pen, um, but that's something that's not too wild. So, you know, it depends on obviously what your budget is, 
Um, but I think going with something a little more, more of a conventional style, you know, I'm thinking like a Platinum 3776, you know, a Sailor 1911, something like that. If you're in like the gold nib range, I do think a gold nib is a nice place to think if it's within your budget, you know, like a starter level gold nib pen, because that's like, you know, graduating from a university, like that's a big deal. It's a huge investment. It's a lot of time spent. So it is kind of cool to get like a nice pen, like something that they would not buy themselves. So I do think it's a good place to start, though. It certainly doesn't have to be you know, in like the 200 plus dollar mark. Um, so if you did want to go in there, I think like a Pilot Custom 823, Pilot Custom 743, something more like Cigar Shades has a prominent nib, not too wild in the color, you know, something kind of conventional. That would looks really good. Um, or you could go something that like, you know, is more of an everyday writing kind of pen. You know, I think like a Lamy 2000 is a great candidate for that because it's not too flashy, but would be like, a great everyday user. I think that kind of bridges the gap a little bit too. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah. it, it is iconic, prolific, doesn't craw check off the pronounced nib box, right. but right. you know, it does have a presence to it. Sure. You know, a gravity, you know, that I think mm -hmm. could make, you know, make it both an everyday writer and a good impactful visible gift. Yeah. I don't even know, like I don't have university grad people in my life really. So I don't know like what's the, what's the general like budget that you kind of have in mind for something like that? Like, I, I really don't know. I guess it depends like how close you are to them. I don't know. But, yeah, it almost all might depend on the degree. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm sure it'll be a little bit different for everybody. So I, you know, I think Pilot U95S too is pretty cool. That was it's my got first a, it's thought. Got, it's, I mean, it looks classy. Yeah. It's Tastes also a great classy. Pen. Yeah. It's classy, smells classy. Yeah, sure. Good golden pen. Mm. Um, also, I said like the Twisby 580 ALR. Mm. I don't know why. It's very clean looking. It is. But if you get something that's got a little pop of color to it, like a Prussian blue or maybe a navy, and the presentation of those boxes too is really nice. So I think if you're looking for something a little more on the affordable side. They're nifty gifty. Twisby, yeah, they look really impressive. They really definitely look like a fountain pen. Um, that could be a good route to go to. But I mean, honestly, you know, being completely truthful, we don't get that many people that shop from us that are buying pens for other people. I think probably we get more people that send other people in their life to go and buy things from us for them for their birthdays or holidays or whatever. <laughs> so we get like the diehard pen people that are like, hey, go and buy me this pen, you know, so mm -hmm. we get <laughs> spouses and significant others shopping for our customers. Yeah. And you could always us. buy a gift card too. <laughs> like sure. if you email us at info at goulaypens.com, you're going to get one of our team members here and they will be more than happy to chat with you about, you know, what pen might be right for you. We'll mm -hmm. ask you questions, you know, ask about, you know, how you write, what you're going to be writing on, where you're going to be writing, your lifestyle. Like we'll do our very best to mm -hmm. get it dialed in. So if you're unsure, then just give them a gift card and say, hey, go talk to my friends over at the Goulet Pen Company. They will help you out because guess what? We will, mm -hmm. and it'll be great, and we yeah. will dial it in, and if they don't love it, we'll make sure they do, and yeah. we won't give up until they love it. That's right. Or until they tell us to go away. That rarely happens. Yeah, no, it doesn't <laughs> Cool. That's what I got. All right. All right. Drew, are you ready for this one? Yes. All right. Nick says, hello. Hello, Nick. If ebonite feeds are made from rubber instead of plastic. Which they are. That's the sentence. Yes. Does that mean that over time, the feed will dry out and become brittle and render the pen useless as an heirloom or lifetime use pen. So rubber definitely doesn't last forever. So, but the, so the question is, does reb, does ebonite do the rubber thing? Yeah, in, in its, wouldn't in it, plastic be better? In its lifespan? Well, that is a great question. And it just so happens I have a rubber guy. I have a hard rubber slash ebonite guy. And uh, his name is Craig. And uh, he's got his own little YouTube channel. Talks a lot about Waterman's fountain pens. And I say Waterman's because that's the old Waterman's from the turn of the century. And uh, he knows a lot about vintage hard rubber. So I got on my walkie talkie and I said, hey, Craig, Nick is asking about rubber. Can you help me out? And he said, yes, Drew, I most certainly can talk about rubber. So we're going to turn it over to Craig, and he's going to talk to us about ebonite and hard rubber. Craig? Hey, guys. So the short answer would be no. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about the hard rubber falling apart or getting brittle over time. 
Let me tell you, I have some fountain pens that are over 130 years old and they look just as good as the day they were made. Charles Goodyear accidentally invented hard rubber in 1839 and it has been used for a lot of things and they still use it to this day. Now, ebonite and hard rubber are basically the same thing. The only difference is the name. So this is a Lamy 2000 and they used to say this was Macrolon. But Macrolon is a brand name and they can't actually call it Macrolon anymore. It's now just a resin fiberglass composite, but same sort of deal. Ebonite is just a brand name. It's Ebonite International made bowling balls. So your difference between rubber and hard rubber Here's a rubber eyedropper. This thing is all kinds of hardened and has all kinds of issues, but this is made out of a different material than hard rubber. I actually have these cards that go through the whole process from the pure para rubber gum and follows through the whole process of making a Waterman's Ideal Fountain Pen. This is from around 1925. And you can see the rubber gum rolled into sheets, rubber with sulfur ready for vulcanizing, rough and polished vulcanized rubber. Here's what a vulcanized barrel and cap look like before they've been turned. Here is a barrel on a mandrel. So hooked up to the machine before they smoothed it all out. Then we have a turned barrel and cap. Here is the section before and after. Here is the world famous spoon feed from the rod all the way made down to the actual feed itself. A sectional view. And lastly, here is a finished Waterman's Ideal 52 fountain pen. This whole thing was used for a display inside of the store to talk about how the pen was made. Here is my oldest pen in my collection. It is an 1889 Waterman's 404. It's a hand engraved sterling silver and hard rubber pen with its very nice horseshoe nib and its original feed. This is a three Fisher feed. This was Waterman's original patent from 1884 and its original section. And it is perfect after being 134 years old. You can still unscrew it, eyedropper fill it, and it's good to go. As far as you being worried about the hard rubber feed being good, it is gonna be fine. I have about 140 pens in my collection and I only had one that ever had a broken feed. I bought it that way so I could restore it. Here is what most Waterman pens end up looking like, either this or like this, or like this. This is actually my daily user. This is all hard rubber. My only real advice would be, you know, I wouldn't worry so much about the feed, but if the pen's not broken, don't fix it. I wouldn't, I don't recommend actually pulling out any of this stuff. A little bit of heat, would help if you're removing the feed from the section, but really I wouldn't really mess with it. I would just kind of either leave it the way it is, try and clean it out as best you can. You can, you know, put the pen in some warm water, clean it out that way. You can always unscrew the, the feeds if it's a eyedropper pen like this and use a bulb syringe to clean out the nib, but I don't really recommend taking these things apart. And also if you can sell with this barrel, don't leave these pens in direct sunlight. That's what happens. But a little bit of linseed oil will darken it up a little bit and it'll do just fine. Or there are people that can restore it, but what it does is it takes off a layer of the hard rubber. So it's not the most recommendable thing. The only thing you actually have to worry about getting cracked is if it's an antique pen that has a sack in it, all of these pens have a sack. All you have to do is you pull down the lever and it pushes down on a little rubber ink sack and this will get dried out, will crack, will fall apart. But these are easy to replace. If you're worried about it, send it to a professional and they will replace it for you. As far as pens that are made out of ebonite, I also have a Namiki Chinkin Dragon. This is made out of hard rubber and Arushi lacquer. And because of that Arushi lacquer, it is much more sturdy, but you don't have to worry about these sorts of things drying out over time. You still want to protect them, you know, keep them away from light. But as far as your question goes, you do not need to worry about hard rubber becoming flaky or dry and brittle. Rubber will, but vulcanized hard rubber is a completely different material and you don't have to worry about it getting dried out and ruining your feed. I hope this was a helpful little insight into antique fountain pens and why you don't need to worry and the differences between hard rubber and ebonite. So back to you guys. Thank you, Craig. He did a good job. He did. He was the right man. I knew he was. Yeah.
I knew he was. Props to Craig. He like cut that video together. He made the editing super easy for us, which we greatly appreciate. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And if you'd like for more Craig, if you like more hard rubber videos, more Waterman's vintage stuff, uh, you can find him both on Instagram and YouTube at Craig Rockanova. I will uh, yeah. put that link in the YouTube description as well. Very jealous of his last name. With a last name like Brown, someone shows up with Rockanova, and you're like, oh, dang it, that's not fair. <laughs> that's right. Anyway. And props to Craig, like those samples that he was showing, like that's legit. Like those he's were got like a, old school. He's got yeah. like a miniature Waterman's museum. That's pretty in his amazing. Home. Yeah, he, co amazing. he collects the, the, the glass cases, the stands. He even has vintage ads like professionally restored to their See, original state. Like is, he is. This is what I was talking about. I can't remember if it was the last pen cast or the one before it, where it's like, as long as I'm in this industry, I, you know, talk to somebody like Craig and I'm like, I'll never know more about Waterman's than Craig will because no. he just goes super deep, super hard on that. Which is another reason Which why cool. we make sure we never claim to be experts on anything because we've been in this business long enough to know that there's always someone, always multiple people who know way more about a, a given fountain pen related mm -hmm. topic than we do. And For it's sure. great. We love that they're out there um, and we are, we do our best, but uh, our natural curiosity will persist. But uh, I don't think we're ever going to uh, claim expertise on anything. I don't know how you even do in something like this, because what governing body would, you know, make that declaration that yeah. somebody's an expert. It's one of not. those things like the, the, the more we learn, the more we realize we don't know. Yeah, I think it's more like we would consider ourselves to be more generalists. Yeah. Instead of specialists. For sure. You know, somebody like Craig, like he's more of a specialist. Absolutely. In Waterman's, you know, and there's like specialists that are in Parker 51s or, you know, certainly if you go the vintage route, you can become a specialist because there's deep history surrounding all of that. Yeah. So... You know, we're more generalists. Yeah, Craig most definitely is. A, I, yeah. I would consider him a Waterman's historian. You know, based on yeah. what I know and who I've talked to about vintage pens. So here's the thing, though. Craig sort of unknowingly sent me down a rabbit hole because when I mentioned this to you, I was like, "Hey, we got a guest for the the you show." Did. And, you teed it up you know, to me. I mentioned the difference morning. between ebonite mm -hmm. and hard rubber, and you're like, "Wait, what?" I was like, "What do you What do you mean by that?" <laughs> actually, and so <laughs> you you put that in my head and then I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta do this. So I watched Craig's clip and then I was like, I gotta do a little research on this. So I'm gonna try to make this as interesting as possible, <laughs> but just come along with me for the journey. It's boring to skip ahead for the next eight we're minutes here. or I've so. I've got my coin. Yeah. Gonna flip um, and smile. But I thought this was a great example of, you know, been doing this 14-ish years and I learned something yesterday that I was like, how have I never come across this uh, with Craig talking about um, how he uses the term hard rubber instead of ebonite. Yes. He's very politely he's, reminded me quite a few times. Well, he's a very courteous, <laughs> very, very courteous, courteous guy. But I was curious about this because we have run into this before. And I think he, he brought up in his video about Macrolon. And mm -hmm. he didn't go super deep on that because that wasn't the point. But, you know, Macrolon is a branded term, just like you have plexiglass or, you know, other things like Lexan. that. Lexan. Yeah, Lexan. So there's like materials companies that that come up with these, you know, materials and they brand them. Teflon. Yeah, Teflon is a good example. So these are like, uh, or like, you know, Post-it or whatever. Velcro. Yeah, exactly. So some of these are like, you know, products instead of materials, but like basically they spend the time and energy to like research and develop some material. They brand it, trademark it, and then you're technically not supposed to call it that trademarked term, you know, because if it's not the material coming from that company, right? So um, this was a good example of that. Now it's interesting, and this is where I kind of dove in a little bit. So I was like, oh, interesting. Now that now that he mentions that, that does make sense that Ebonite, you know, might be a branded term and maybe it's not being used appropriately. Cause like ever since I got into the fountain pen hobby, hard rubber has always been called Ebonite. It's just right. been ubiquitous and yeah. never with a trademark logo, it's, I've never seen it come up in a thread. So for me, it was like, how have I never come across this before? So I did a little deep dive on this. And some of this is because like we've trademarked certain things here. So I'm, you know, have had to go through this process with lawyers and all that. And it's complicated and expensive, but I have a casual knowledge of it. So if you go, this is just in the US, you have to like trademark things in each country, right? But if you trademark stuff through the US Patent and Trademark Office, 
Um, you can actually go to the USPTO.com. You can look up in their system. You can see as public record all of the trademarks that are out there. So if you if you think getting into fountain pens is not nerdy enough, you can get into researching trademarks. Um, but yeah, you can do that. They have a system. It's called TESS. It stands for something. I don't remember what it is. Trademark something system something. Um, whatever. Search trademark something search system at whatever it is. Um, so I looked up Ebonite just to see like what's the public record of Ebonite as a US patent office trademarked term. Well, it did confirm some of what he was talking about. He was talking about like the use for like bowling balls and stuff yep. like that. So I, I sort of went on two rabbit holes that then wove in on each other. So I'll try to tie it all together. Um, but I went onto this test search thing. I found no active trademark for ebonite in any type of like writing instrument, fountain pen, or even just a general materials category. Mm -hmm. So what I did find, so they list trademarks, there's ones that are dead, which is like, because trademarks don't last forever. Right. You have to file them and show that there's like a product that you have in use to keep the trademark active. Well, um, I didn't see anything that had expired or anything active that was related to anything in the pen or writing instrument category. It doesn't mean that that wasn't always the case. I just don't know how far back these records go. My guess is that probably it was some like, if either like, I don't know if it's officially registered trademark term or just like a commonly used term for that, you know, the company. But I believe that it was like the vulcanization process that Goodyear came up with, um, you know, creating like car tires and stuff like that. But it was basically like before they had early plastics and all that, they used this hard rubber which they called ebonite. So I think the ebonite was the name that they used for it, but I didn't find any public record of an active or dead trademark term mm. for ebonite. So it doesn't mean that it wasn't always the case. It's just not on, on the record on this test site, whatever. Um, so I trust Craig that it, you know, if it's like referring to that, like the official term, but because it's not an active trademark, there is no, there is no more ebonite being made today right. with the official TM, right? right? But to sort of counter argue, it's an it's an industry term. Like everybody refers to hard rubber as ebonite in, mm. the, in the pen world. So I think it's interchangeable. I think if you're if you're living in Craig's world where he's going vintage and you're going super far back, it probably matters more because there may have been like an active trademark back at that time, mm. and maybe you splice and dice a little bit more. But basically, any new material that you're dealing with. Hard rubber is ebonite, ebonite is hard rubber. There might be different, slightly different formulations and stuff as to who manufactures it or whatever, but there's so little of it around anyway. But I isn't don't that kind of like, like, like- I don't think it's worth like dissecting. But like if tissues weren't made anymore um, and you know people still find tissues, but so you're saying that if Kleenex the company is no longer making tissues yeah, and they never filed a trademark back when they did make tissues, it'd be fine to call them Kleenexes? I think so, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Or it's like not even, well, it depends if you're referring to the original item, then you would want to be more specific to like, oh, this was a Kleenex because right, it was made. Right, but like if we're talking about like antique tissues, like if it's been a hundred years, you can call them all tissues. You can call them all Kleenexes. Yeah, if it's like if the Kleenex company doesn't exist anymore, yeah. and there's no every patents, trademarks, all that stuff expired. A hundred years goes by, people are still wiping their noses. No, with yeah, they've got a new technique to wipe their things. noses. Yeah, and they'd call them Kleenexes. I don't see a problem with that because yeah. it's just what it's called now. Maybe not. Because it's not like an actively trademarked thing. So again. I'm going to feel weird about it now. I'll tell you that. Well. <laughs> I, I, I feel weird now knowing that Ebonite's a brand name. Well, I, so I didn't find any record. So here's the, th that's the, that's the thing. And this is where the bowling balls come in too. Mm -hmm. So when I was looking up the, the trademark stuff for Ebonite, there is a company called Ebonite International, which is a bowling ball manufacturer mm -hmm. and they make other bowling equipment and stuff they have an active trademark for e ebonite i don't know what the difference is but it's like the letter e and then ebonite for bowling ball equipment not the balls themselves which is i thought was interesting but mm. it's all kinds of bowling balls off gloves and things whatever um so i found bowling equipment i found another one for ebonite that was something related to like mattress toppers another one for bulk industrial oils so basically when you file a trademark, you file the name of whatever the thing is and it has to be within a certain category. That's why you can have like a Delta Pens and a Delta Airlines. Right. The whole point of a trademark is it doesn't create market confusion. Right. Nobody's confusing a Delta Pen with an airplane company. So 
you know, it's kind of the same thing. It's like if there's a company making bowling balls, are they going to get confused with a pen, you know, thing? Right. Probably not. But I, from what I understand, the Ebonite International, that's like the bowling ball company that used this Ebonite material. So I think there's like some thread of history there. Mm-hmm. But even bowling balls haven't been made of hard rubber in like 50 or 60 years. Yeah. So they've, they've gone to alternate materials. Yeah. So it's, it's been a longer. colloquial adoption of the term. Yeah. So like to me, I think it would be weird if you had a hard rubber bowling ball mm. and you called it ebonite because that would create confusion as to what it was because ebonite is still an active brand mm-hmm. in the bowling space. But there is no active trademark in the U.S., for ebonite and anything relating to pens that I was able to find. Yeah, that's a pretty so, you know, logical way to look at it. So I I I think if you want to if you're talking vintage and you want to get super like correct and specific, I would trust that Craig has more knowledge about that than me and I think you should distinguish ebonite from hard rubber if it's not ebonite made by whoever had the ebonite trademark at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but today it's called ebonite because it's a term that is understood to be vulcanized rubber or hard mm-hmm. rubber. There's really no problem with that because it's the same as calling it hard rubber. It's just a word that's made up to describe what it is. It's not violating anything. No, no, there's no legal there's recourse. There's no manufacturer. Yeah, there's you're no, not gonna get in trouble. So I could argue that it's essentially interchangeable. And, you know, I would say the confusion is just that, you know, are they even different things? So you can, you, you know, is ebonite different than hard rubber? All mm-hmm. right, well, you can, you go ahead and keep calling it ebonite, but when the ebonite police come and get you, I'm going to be like, he did that on purpose. I can show you the receipts. Pencast number 90, he says it doesn't matter, and they're going to be like, oh, well, we're going to throw the book at him now. Yeah. So, and I'm going to be like, sorry, Brian. You you made your bet on this one. Yeah. Going to ebonite jail. I think it's I think It's, it's going to be really like, flammable. Ebonite jail. <laughs> 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 Actually, no, I don't know if ebonite's flammable. Ebonite, you can catch it on fire. I hope I, what, I I envision if you like cut an ebonite feed into segments and light it on fire, it does that like creepy snake ash thing that mm. those old school fireworks used to do. You remember that? They come in those little know. black discs and you light them on fire and they'd be like, mm-hmm. that's right. I, w- I want a feed to do that. If I, I don't know fire. if they, I don't know if it'll be. I'm never going to light a feed on fire so I can you maintain. You can catch it on fire. No, 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 I don't want to because I want this, me- I want to keep this fantasy alive in my head. Okay, fair yeah. enough. There you go. All right. That's more than you cared to know. So I respect Craig. I'm not disagreeing. I'm with sure him. somebody out there cared about that. I'm not so sure about that, <laughs> but I felt like I just had to say it. I researched it to the point where I was like, if I don't talk about it, then I've done all this for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully somebody out there cares. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got. That wasn't sh- even my question. Uh, are you sure? Are you sure? Because there's, there's, there's more. Do you want me to? There's like a tangential mini deep dive. I, know, I just thought you were going to keep going. Oh, right, I'll, mention, I'll mention the last point no, too. No, we're, we're, we're good. We're, I've already dug myself into the hole. We're, we haven't reached an hour yet. Well, so I went, like, I went to the macro lawn, right? Because that was one thing. When we did start carrying Lamy, the term macro lawn was something that was like yeah, used we had, commonly. Yeah, we had it on the product We page. had it on our site for a little yeah. bit unknowingly, but that is a trademark term. That's specifically coming from Bayer. That's a company that manufactures that. So I did a little deep dive. While I was already on the USPTO website, I was like, let me search macro lawn and just make sure that that's an active trademark. None of this matters. This is... <laughs> <laughs> Why do I do this in my free time? Um, instead of so instead of uh, inst- reading fiction. This is what I do instead of reading <laughs> fiction. This is as non-fiction as you can get uh, <laughs> looking at trademark uh, websites. Um, so Macrolon does have an active trademark filing yeah. for the USPTO. Uh, they have it under several different things, but the one that's most relevant is for thermoplastic polycarbonate resin, which is you know what we know it to be. Yeah. Um, it was originally filed by filed by Bayer in Germany. Bayer something. There's another longer word, but Bayer, the, the materials company. Um, but then I was saw these other things, and I was like, what are these other companies? So apparently Bayer spun out into Covestro. So Bayer was like the Bayer Materials Science Company or whatever. Some. It's like one of these multinational corporate things with all these like sub entities or whatever. So I guess they spun out that under Covestro and now apparently they're rebranding Macrolon as Exelon starting in 2021. So they had they use both words on their website, but they might be even be moving away from Macrolon into Exelon. But e- either way, whatever the material is, it's maybe like, they'll let the trademark expire. Yeah, they might. They might. And we can they take it back. If they don't care about it anymore, <laughs> you know, but anyway. That was just a little 
little deep dive there. All so, right. so Macrolon is an active thing, which is why as soon as we became aware of, you know, Macrolon as an active trade, there we, we stopped be, using it. There everywhere. would be legal recourse there. Potentially, yeah. yeah. But and so as soon as we became aware of it, yeah, yeah. But for Ebonite, there's there's nothing out there. So we're good to use right. it as long as we feel okay with it in our souls, which Drew doesn't, but now I am <sighs> fine with him. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. I also don't, li- it's easier to say than hard rubber. It is. And it also like, you say hard rubber, you still think, even though hard is in there, you still think rubber though. Right. Is it bouncy? Like rubber? And no, then, it's hard rubber. But... And that gets to the nature of the question, right? When you hear it's like rubber, like why would you want a rubber feed? It's yeah. like, it's not, it's not rubber. It's not what people would associate with rubber. I think it actually is less confusion in the market calling it ebonite than it is calling it hard rubber. At this point. For the people who we deal with yeah. as like more entry level into at the this, fountain pen at world. At this point, you're right. And for I have. Craig and his world, they do need that distinction well, I have, at that level. I have you know? talked to him about it offhand and he's just like, no, nah, I don't really care. I call it hard rubber because I make that distinction, but sure. like he's, sure. he's he's not a stickler for Fair it. enough. Fair yeah. enough. Cool. All right. Last question from our friend Potter Watch 221B. What's the last pen you personally bought for yourself, not work related? Oh, how do I distinguish that? Well, I guess like a Cause pen. Because like, because the pen that my life you know, is my work, and my work is my life. Rather yeah. than rather than saying like, mm, yeah, I should probably keep one of those. Right. When did you say I need to have one of those? Like, I I want one of those for me, Brian, the pen enthusiast, rather than me, Brian, the business owner. So I will say there's a lot of things that I like have a feeling of want around that I don't act upon. Yeah. You know, because let's be real, I have access to more pens than make sense in 10 people's lifetime. So I find it very easy to resist the urge to buy pens that don't make sense for work purposes. Okay, right? well, how about, how, about, how about you give us like both? Yeah, yeah, I got a, give, I got give a couple. Give us one you really, really wanted, but actually like chose to not pull the trigger on and then the actual last one you bought for personal reasons. I mean, there was one, I mean, as soon as Omos went under, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, the Omos 360. Like, it's like a triangular pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially in like the Arco celluloid that yeah. they were kind of known for. I never really wanted enough to like actually pay the prices that you see for those things. But I was like, that's a pretty iconic pen Mm -hmm. and that is really cool and that would be cool to own. Again, didn't want it hard enough to get it, otherwise I probably would have chased one down. But that would kind of fall in that category. Like company's not around anymore. There's no work need other than like maybe referencing it. What about something like a recent release that we've had? Oh gosh, that's the thing is like I've, I get so many of pens that we have like access to it just doesn't come up as often. Yeah, honestly, I'm too busy researching trademark websites in my spare time. <laughs> but there was there, has, there hasn't been one like mm. that came about recently that you didn't have a business reason to write off, but you did want it personally. But we're like, I'm not actually going to do that because it's too expensive. But I would really like this personally. Um. Oh, like ones. Yeah, I guess there's a lot. Like a lot of the higher end pens would probably fit into that. Yeah. You know. Oh, oh, I know one. Um. This wasn't super recent, mm. but I remember you got a Tatya Empress. Yes. And then they came out with the one with the KOP nib. Mm-hmm. The bigger one. And you were like. I was like, mm, if I'd known that that know. one was coming out. You were like talking to Rachel, like, do you yeah. think maybe I could like trade it in and take the other one? Yeah. <laughs> you were like probing her for that. Like kind of like. That's a good one. What if, I remember because you you did, because you, you, that one was a personal one. There really was that. There was no. Yeah, no it was not a hard re- business case. To exactly, have that. that was not a, an LE number. Like for the well, it wasn't be... exclusive that we did. Yeah, I do tend to. I do tend to. Yeah, that's keep true. Exclusive, but you just definitely wanted orders. a second one. But it was so close to the one you had just gotten for yourself, you and it was expensive. Too. Yeah, you couldn't justify basically getting the same. Yeah, there's pen a lot twice. of high end pens like that. Like every new yeah. key that comes out, I'm like, I pretty much want that. But yeah. it's like that. That's a slippery slope to go down to yeah. get new pens that are that expensive. Um, I do have some that I did, but they're not super recent. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I went to Japan, so yeah. I went there in 2019, I bought several pens, specifically were ones that like I couldn't easily get here in the US. Yeah. And by by that very nature, there's really no work benefit to me talking about them, you know, in like a pen cast or anything like yeah. that. We're not gonna, you know, we can't sell them. They're associated, some of them are associated with brands that we have which I guess is tangentially sort of work related, but I really just bought them because I thought they were cool. And um, so those pens, I have talked about some of them, but I bought my um, Sailor King of Pens, the Asian Way, the really big one. I had that in my top three 
five oh pens that I did yeah. recently. I slipped that one in there. Um, that one I had no justification for whatsoever. We didn't even carry Sailor at that time. We yeah. had no promise that we would carry Sailor at that time. It was just like, this pen is just amazing. And it would like mark time for me in history of going to Japan, you know, and it would be like a special memory for me. So that's why I bought that one. And then we had everything on full of Sailor and all worked out and I was like, well, now it's even more special. Um, so again, this is where for me, my work and my life are so intertwined. It's hard to, it's hard for me to make any fountain pen purchase that I can't say is work related because yeah. it's all, but you know, I had no work specific purpose for that one. Yeah. Um, I also found a pilot uh, vanishing point in blue that I, I think was, I had no context because it was like a secondhand type store. Um, but it was apparently some like Japanese exclusive that they had with a re retailer exclusive over there. But it was blue with like some like wispy, like white kind of like pattern to it. Not quite like the carbon-esque, like not that detailed. Yeah. But more like the, um, uh, what was the limited edition one that was like the, the teal with the black um, kind of like webbing almost. Uh, the name is failing me, but it was that, it was that type of a pattern to it but it was like a goulet blue. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is cool. I'd never seen it before. And I was like, all right, I'm just gonna buy that because it's a blue vanishing point that's special. So that one I bought, um, I bought a platinum vintage. I don't even know the exact model of it, but it's sort of like the, um, sort of like the style of the uh, Pilot, which pen is it? Like the sterling silver, but it's like the one that's like the cross hatch kind of engraving on it. Sorry, I can't remember the name. You're talking about but the Silvern? Silvern, maybe that's it. Maybe. It's not the one with like the animals and stuff carved into it. Um, it might be Silvern. I mean, that's the ones we currently have, the Sterling ones. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, Silvern. Yeah. So it's sort of of that style, but this was like, but it's platinum and it's got an inlaid nib kind of similar to that, but mm -hmm. this is vintage. It's from like the 60s. And it has like this broad nib on it that's like a little bit stubby. Um, and it's just really cool. And that was one that I found, you know, uh, I went to Japan for platinum for their hundredth anniversary. So to buy like a vintage kind of special platinum on that trip was also pretty nice. cool. And they get, I mean, again, it was on a work trip, but it, I hadn't, I could have not bought that pen and it would have been fine. Um, and then when I went to Itoya in like the Ginza in Tokyo, I wanted to buy a couple of pens just that were there. I wanted to buy everything that was there. Yeah. Um, a lot of the stuff was stuff that like we recognized and and see here, but they had a couple of things. They had the pilot, I don't know whether it's Grand Se, I yeah. think is how it's pronounced. I think so. That pen's kind of interesting. So yeah, I got one of those cool. and it's like a silver body with a blue cap, mm -hmm. which even that pen is one that I think we've talked maybe with Pilot USA about encouraging them to bring it in yeah. it's not currently available yeah i think they were close at some point but it, yeah uh, never but even came. that version of it is one i had never seen in their catalog or anything so that was kind of cool so i picked that up um and then they had this pilot it was like a Machier multi pen so it's got like a pencil it's like it's like a four you know like the, yeah, the yeah. cookie like top ones but it's like it's got like mount fuji and it's like yurushi it's like a, it's a lower price thing but it's it's a more expensive for a multi pen, but lower price for a Machier. Um, so it's a simple Machier, but I liked the Mount Fuji design and the multi pen was just like, oh, this is interesting. So it's not a fountain pen, but I still thought it was an interesting pen. So, you know, all of those pens I associate like with my trip to Japan for different reasons and stuff like that. So, but yeah, the majority of the pens I buy are pretty, pretty heavily work. -related. Yeah, I'm trying to think of ones that like, you know, that you've picked up recently that were not like a limited edition for good historical. I mean, there are, there have been. I mean, I bought like a couple of Canalea pens. I bought some from like independent yeah, you know, pen makers like recent, just to like support recent, them. Recently, they've cool. all been, you know. I haven't done a lot recently. Yeah. You know, I mean, most of my recent purchases have, have been work related. Yeah. Probably because like as we've done more exclusives and more things like that. Those are the ones you get excited the, about. Well, in the pace of which I've acquired those, it's like. It's enough. Yeah. It's enough. I'm not you've like also left just recently for other you've things. Also, you also just recently in the last couple months redid your whole collection inventory. I did, And yeah. that probably puts your headspace into, uh, you know. I, I look at it now and I'm like, <laughs> I got enough. Yeah. I got enough. Like you're double too stack. Many. You're double too stacking many. trays yeah. these days. Which I know it's not like a woe is me. Oh, I have too many. No. No. But it's just like, you know, I'm I'm very content. You're getting a little more selective, probably. I, I am trying to be a little more selective. In fact, I've had some way or I've like gotten excited about it. I'm like, ooh, let's set one of those aside. It sits on my desk for like a few days and I'm like, 
I'm gonna put that one back in stock. Like I don't actually need that pen. That you know, really, yeah. it's you know. So I have more of that. I'm trying to be a little more discerning yeah. about that. You know? You're keeping one of the uh, Franklin Kristoffs though, right? Yeah, yeah. Still, any exclusive that we do, I'm yeah. keeping just because like once it's gone, it's yeah. like we may never see it again. Yeah. Um, I feel like yeah, that one. If we didn't like, if it was gonna be an ongoing pen, I think you'd probably still pick one of those up, right? That's pretty darn cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you probably would. That's pretty cool. Um, for me, the most recent one was a Visconti Mirage Mythos in Apollo Brown. Mm. Um, I loved that pen when I first reviewed it and uh, just wanted to have one. And yeah. it's already, I think, th the best performing Visconti I've ever had. That's awesome. Like, <laughs> including gold nibs. Wow. I, I love the way it writes. I love its balance. I love its build quality. I just, I really do love it. So I had to have that one. Um, so I did, you know, buy that one just on my own. I don't have the problem, the burden of just being able to write off pens for the <laughs> business. So... Um, okay. This is an easier question for me because <laughs> I do have some. Yeah, because you like you have access to a lot of pens, but yes, so you're, you're not as like intertwined into the right fabric. My of finances the pen are very history. separate yeah. from the yeah. business, <laughs> yeah. so um, yeah, I picked that one up, and then uh, between now and you know the last holiday season, I've picked up a lot of gift pens, a couple of swipes, a couple of explorers, mm -hmm. and a couple of kakunos. Um, and then prior to that, the biggest purchase I made was the Sailor um, Pro Gear Slim in Christmas Pudding. Yeah. So that one I absolutely loved. I pen. had to have that pen. It went fast, so I was really glad that I did get one. Yeah. But that's one of my favorites. I wish it was a. Uh, I do wish it was a standard Pro Gear mm. and not a Slim, um, just because I love it. and I want more of it. Mm. But I'll, I'll take it. I think it's. A, that's all they made it in was a Slim. It was right? only in yeah. a Slim. Yeah. The that's other. It was like the Christmas tea or whatever that was in the standard size. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's still a lovely pen. I'm really excited. However, I've been a little hesitant to. Uh, Break it out during the springtime because I just feel like it's a winter pen now. Oh well, I mean, so I think I have to be. I know, but I think that if I wait until it gets cold again, I'll be really mm. excited to use it again. Mm. So, and I've got enough pens to. You got, you got yeah, others. I'll be yeah. fine. You got others, but uh, those are my two um, most recent pen purchases of 2023 so far. Nice. Um, I'm probably forgetting some, but mm. uh, those are the ones that come to my mind. Very cool. All right. Well. Obviously, if you have other questions, feedbacks, all like that, you can leave it in the comments on YouTube. You can email us at pencast at goulaypens.com, especially if you're an audio listener, and uh, don't see the comments quite as much. Yeah, let us know if you have some crazy pen shapes that you'd like to share with us, and mm. uh, let us know if anybody wants to go ahead and register the Ebonite trademark so Brian has no choice but to stop <laughs> saying it. <laughs> Maybe That would be evil. That would be. I think in order to actually get the trademark, though, you have to have it like associated with an actual oh. thing. So you have to start making <laughs> a pen. I don't know. Maybe an existing pen company might be able to do that. I don't know if you have to make the material if you make a pen called the Ebonite pen. What what pen Could company? What, what pen company do you think uses Ebonite the most right now? I mean, Aurora. Nobody, nobody really uses it a lot. I mean, Aurora has Ebonite feeds on all of their gold nib pens. Yeah. Namiki's got Ebonite feeds on their higher end pens. Yeah, and they use they use Ebonite. Monograppa uses Ebonite feeds. Uh, Namiki probably pens. uses more Ebonite than anybody because they make so many Ebonite. They pens. have a lot of Ebonite pen bodies and yeah, sealers. Barrels. Got some. Yeah, but again, it's like you got to register it for each company or for each country too. Oh, so right. you know, this would just be a U.S. thing. That's so. Somebody, somebody, jump oh, on it. You can, you can, you can register here. it and then sue everybody. <laughs> Yes, that's what the pen. <laughs> that's what the pen company, the pen world's looking for. <laughs> Somebody to come in and steal the trademark. You know that happened with uh, Yosemite National Park. So the the U.S. Uh, uh, Did Looney Tunes take what it? Is it? No, the oh. um, whatever the the uh, parks department or whatever. Yeah, Parks and Recreation. Yeah, there was a lapse in the trademark for the name Yosemite, and some like douchebag marketing company went in there no. and registered the trademark. What? Yeah, and then they sold it back to the government because they like, <gasps> They ransomed Yosemite? Mm -hmm. <gasps> yep. Oh, that's rotten. Yeah. I bet there's a name. I bet much. you there's a term for that. I bet you people do that all the time on smaller scales. Oh yeah, like trademark and patent and stuff like that. Patent <gasps> trolls is usually what they're it's called. called patent but, pirates and go with alliteration. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh Golly. you know, it happens, but you know. That's stinky. It doesn't behavior. happen in the pen world that I'm aware of, but maybe we've cracked the door open on that. Yeah. On that one. Maybe we should do it. We'll just come out with a pen. The Droulet Ebonite. Ooh, there we go. Uh, toothbrush cleaning. I'm just waiting pen. for the Goulet Pen Company <laughs> trademark to end. I'm going to mm. get 
I'm gonna get it, ransom You're it back take to it you, over? and we'll call it Drew Lay. <laughs> you won't have a choice. Oh my gosh. Change all the logos. Well, if we call it Drew Lay, then the Goulet patent wouldn't matter, or the trademark or whatever. That's true. It's a different name. I'm just waiting to do that until I can start the Michael Scott Paper Company, and then you can hire me back. <laughs> I don't know what the point of that would be. There you go. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. That's what we got for Q&A this week. Um, we were talking about, hey, what pen should we spotlight? And I was like, I don't know. Why don't we do the blindfold guess the pen thing again? Yes. And so that's what we're going to do. I don't know if we're going for like All right, actual who, contest. Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? It's made up. We anyway. didn't. We, we talked about like, like as we were walking in here, Brian says, should we have like some rules <laughs> this is after should both of us. Find some rules. This is oh, after both of us have, about like pens that are currently made or whatever. We, we had already picked our pens at that point. Yeah. And I was like, now it's too late for rules. It's too so late. We both picked pens. We did not follow any sort of guidelines while we did it. So, not really. You know, one of ours could be punishingly hard, and the other one could be merciful. We really have no idea. But we're just going to go for it and see what happens. Okay. Uh, do you want to go first, or shall I? I'm down for whatever. All right. Well, how about you I'll go first since I've got the phone here? So okay. I'll, I'll pick one for you to start off with. Okay. We're going on the honor system because we couldn't find any good yeah. type of blindfold. But uh, we'll just keep our eyes closed. So All right. Drew's going to hand me a pen. I'm just going to go by feel. That's try to right. guess what it is. Um, now, I remember when we've done this in the past. We've done just pen or we've also tried to guess nib size. Yeah. You're probably not going to do like that. But um, there's the pen. Oh. It is in your hands right now. Okay. Feels like it's got some weight to it. It does have some weight. Okay. It's not plastic. It seems like a snap cap. Okay. Yep, you got the snap. Yeah. Okay. The clip. I got a little bit of waviness. It's okay. a wavy it's clip. It's got a swoopy yeah. kind of thing. It swoops. Okay. Okay. It's got. It feels. It's got like a very defined top. Okay. Uh, this is feeling like maybe a retro fifty one tornado or something similar to that. Because like the the crown at the top here, that just feels like a retro oh. top, and it's got like a pretty thin, like center band there. Yeah, I think this is a tornado. Is All it right. a tornado? You can look at can it anytime look? you want. Oh, it's close. It's an Innova. Oh, how about that? Okay, the, you know the tornado is maybe not quite as heavy as this. You know what? But I it's think close. I I think I gave you a tornado last time. I think I gave you the sound. The, oh. I think I gave you the Santa Jaws. I have zero recollection yeah. of what you've done to, hand to me before. All I remember, I remember that okay, one. Okay, Innova. You, 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 All right. You punished me with the Twisby Precision last time. I did. I really tripped you and up. And the Lamy Lady. That's right. Because <laughs> you're terrible. I got some whacked out ones this yeah. time too. So there you go. Okay, you got me, Drew. Yep. Good job. That, that, that one we don't carry anymore, but we carry ones with the same sort okay. of, you know. Nice situation All right. there. All right, you ready for the next one? All right, yeah, you go ahead right. and take the phone. Oh, we're, and... we're trading off. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I thought yeah, we were we'll doing do all in a row. No, no, you give me one this time. Okay, let's see here. I got to see if I can pull it out of here one handed. Um, let's see, let's see. I'm going to start off. I'm going to start off with a pretty, pretty interesting one. Okay. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh this, is, this is loud. Oh, 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 I know this one. I know this one. Do you? Wait, it might be on. too distinct. Oh, wait. Maybe, oh, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. Talk, talk me through it. What are you, what are you okay. experiencing here? At first, my, my first thought was that it was a, oh, no way. Is this a, this is threaded? Oh, it's threaded. Okay. It's threaded. All right, this is a smallish. Th okay, yep, yep, yep. This is the. Uh, um, it's very distinct. Is it a pilot? If you know it. It is a pilot. Is it the petite one? It's not the petite one. Oh, dang it. Okay, it's that, I know what this is. Is this thing purple right here? It's like a bluish purple. Yeah, I know. I've seen this in your in your in your mm, cabinet before. Do you remember the name? I don't though? know if I do. I know it's a <laughs> Japan only pilot. It's clear, right? It's got a clear cap. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen this before. It has a very cool sounding name. Yeah, I don't know the name of this like, one. Like you could name a roller coaster after oh, this. Oh man, uh the the the, the turbo. The and it's it's ultra you're, nugget. You're close. You're I close. You're close. Yep. The vortex. No, I wouldn't have gotten that. I I knew what it looked like. Yeah. I could picture it's it weird. in my head. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It usually <laughs> occupies a spot with the petite one. In that, it's like, right in there. Yeah. yeah. In that like obscure. Yes. Pilot wheel never carry kind yeah. of a vibe. Okay. Oh, that was a good one. Very Thank good. You. Thank you. It's a like. It, 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 it was, I went like I was like this is very distinct. So you're felt, either not going to get it at yeah, all. Yeah. It very. Or it know. felt very distinct for sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see what next one you got here. Boom. Oh, all right. Oh, it's very light. It is very light. Very light. Definitely different than the last one. Definitely, yeah, like a lighter plastic kind of thing. Okay, I got a clip. You do have a clip on very this one. Very simple clip. Spring clip. 
great, not a very strong spring clip. No, weak, it's, a, it's a little weak. Weak clip, okay. Not a very distinct top. No, just a little nubbin. Okay, there's like no real center band. Like a little bit of a step down from the cap to the body. Okay, th okay, threaded cap. Oh, what is What it's is short little what grip? What is that? What is this little grip? Oh my right? gosh. What kind of nib we got on here? Seems like a fairly conventional shaped nib. Oh, what is this? What is it indeed? Oh my gosh, what I, is this? I'll tell you, it is colored. It's it has colored. a it has color. It has color. It's not monochromatic. Oh man, this that, is really tricky. That, me that out helps here. you that helps you in no way. Let me see. Let's see if I can feel the converter. Let's see if that that's not gonna help me. you. It's not gonna help me at all. No. Nah. It's like a standard yep. converter. Okay, well that tells me something. Okay, it does. It does. You know? Um, gosh, oh, I feel like I should know this. I'll give you a hint. Okay. It, it was a Goulet exclusive. Is this like a defect Jin Hao or something? No. That we had? Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Because we had like a Jin Hao, was it the 51A or something where they put just a regular no, of a hooded nib it's, on it? it. Was but a I think that was, was wood. A Goulet exclusive Goulet and also exclusive. a personal favorite of mine. Oh, shoot. Oh, man. I really should know this now. You've narrowed it down a lot. Um, no, I was thinking it was like the colors are very much my vibe, <sighs> like brown. <laughs> it I'm could guessing. be. Shoot, I'm like totally blanking on this, man. What is going on? Let's see if I can like braille the nib markings <laughs> or something. <laughs> oh, it's not helping me at all. The feed is that going to give me? No, it's just normal feed. Gosh, there's just nothing distinctive enough about this to tell me where it's going. Wow. You designed this pen yourself. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I, wow, I really should know. I'm, I'm totally stumped. I'm just drawing a blank. All right. What is it? Oh, my gosh. It's this an, is the freaking Ascent. Yes. Oh, that's You picked out that me. clip. You picked out the grip section. <laughs> Man. Oh. This is really hard to tell by feel. Like, I didn't recognize the feel at all. There's like nothing on it. It's got a great grip stop though. Okay. It's one of my favorite, because it, it stops nice wow. and tight. It's not too bulky, but it does have a nice hard stop so your fingers don't slip down. Gosh, I'm losing my touch, Drew, I swear. You should have posted it. I should have posted it, that yeah. would have helped. That is a very that. nice, right. deep post. I won't make that mistake all again. Right. All right, this next one. Next one. This next one I got. We're going to see how you do on this one. All right. Is this one easier or harder than the last one? It's different. It's oh. very different. Oh. Okay. Oh, my God. Jeez. It's a chonker. Okay. This is this is a... Uh, You'll probably be able to tell this. Yeah. No, this is a Nil Magnifico. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's too easy. Yeah. Definitely Nil Magnifico. You can yep. feel the little fleur de lis mm -hmm. things here. Definitely the Visconti bridge clip there. Yeah. Il Magnifico. Um, now, what type of marble? That, that, mm, that Which color? As far as as far <laughs> Can as you feel the color. As far as the ones I know you have, you have a green one, don't you? I don't have a green one. Oh, because this is the gold one then. No. No. Red one. Oh. That was the OG. The first, yeah. The first one. Yeah, that was a, that was a very easy one. I thought yeah, I thought that, that was a gimme. That cap was a it definitely was. Yeah, it you know your was. you know your Visconti's too yeah. well. I knew I couldn't get away with it. Okay. But that was a gimme. All right. Last one, Brian. Okay. Let me see. What I just is, gotta get one, man. What is this one? You got all three of them last <laughs> I gotta time. Redeem so, myself. so you 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 did uh, all right. Oh no. I've handled too many logs. I think this one's I'm the hardest. I'm losing this the sense the, of touch. I think this one's the hardest one. The hardest? I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, gosh. Huh. Okay. Okay. It's faceted. It is faceted. But it tapers into round. It's got a little bit of a point there. Okay. I have an idea what this is. Is it black? It is. I believe it's a Coeco original. <gasps> oh, my God. Yeah. Wow! I, I see. Yeah, I have. This is a relatively new one, and we didn't really do a whole lot no, with this one. I did not think you were going to get this one. The reason I messed around with this one somewhat recently because what what video was I using it on? Um, something where I was messing with nibs and like changing out the nibs and stuff. Um, I don't remember which video it was at this point, but yeah, I was messing around with this pen a little bit. Oh, yeah. right. And like the, the hexagonal with the tapering I mean, yeah, thing, that I, was like, that like was it definitely, distinctive. It feels like a Kaveco, but I didn't, the but original this is, is such is a, like, yeah, it's, it's not obscure, a popular one. But yeah. all right, I feel better. Very nice. I feel better that I got one. Yeah. And it was kind of obscure, so that's good. That was a good, that was a good, you get one and a half points all right. for that one. Well, thank you. Yeah. I will take it. I'll take anything right. I can get. Last here. one, right? All right, last one, last one. 
Let's see. This is a pen that you do know kind of well. Okay. So we're going to see how you do with this Ooh, one. Ooh, we got some length on this one. Yeah. All right. Uh, There's a lot going on. Why do we have a little funky thing back here? What is mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's light, but big. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and, I, and I know this one? All right. Oh, you know this one. Oh, goodness gracious. Why does this not feel familiar? You've given this one a lot of love in the past. Huh. Okay. Wait. Oh, wait. This is a metal. This is a metal. Mm, a metal going for the converter to okay. help you out here. What? What? Pen? So this has got to be Italian. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is this? It is thing? Italian. It is Italian. Yeah. That they 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 do that thing. What in the world? Oh, oh, oh hang on. Oh, we've got a blind cap, a, co a converter plus mm -hmm. situation here. Okay. Oh, who does I that? Should narrow it down quite a bit. It does. Um. So this is almost like a matte. It's not super shiny. It's mm -mm. it's it's a, it's a matte-ish pen. So a blind cap. So like the p blind cap thing is usually like a uh, delta sort of deal. Mm -hmm. Um. It's a roller. Yep, it's a roller. Okay, so. What in the world is going on here? This is a really interesting finial or cabochon or whatever. What shape is this? <laughs> is this a this it almost feels like a Monte Grappa mountain? Because those are really always pretty pronounced. Not Monte Grappa, a uh, Monteverde mountain. It's not it's not symmetrical, whatever this shape is. It's not symmetrical. No. I don't know that the shape of that will help you out too much. Okay. That's weird. No. All right. Um, oh man, and this band is a really sharp etching. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I don't. Man, I'm I'm lost. You've, I'm surprisingly light. So you've definitely handled this pen before several times. Oh man, it's not a pen that we ever carried. Oh, God. But it's one that I personally have been a big Oh, fan I know of. what you did. I know what you did. <laughs> this is that ugly pen with it's the wood barrel. You can't, it's too bad you can't see it because oh, it is a feast I for know the what eyes. It, I know what this is now. Okay, what yeah. You've been about? sarcastic. I don't what really like this pen. About? I hate this pen. <laughs> this is a Delta, um, d oh, golly. Vomit attack, whatever it is. <laughs> the uh, what is the name of this thing? The Amalfi. The Amalfi. God, yes. I hate this Isn't it pen. It's beautiful. Jeez. It's so beautiful. Oh, it I'm just looks so good in your hands I too, feel, Drew. I feel dirty just touching it. <laughs> Golly. All right. Yeah, that was a good one, Brian. I didn't know if that you would pick up on that right one. away, but yeah. that was a good one. Like, yeah. yeah. I was hoping you would just give it like all oh, kinds it's of compliments. Got way too much going on. It's it's it's. it's, it's oh, I'm offended. It's an, it's an acquired taste. I'm offended. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, that was good. That was good. So I we, went a little wacky on my choices. So but, we know. both got uh, one out of three. All right. So I don't know what not that our, says. Not our greatest outing, but well, for how much we planned this, I think. Yeah, you know, that's it worked true. Out and this honestly, time. I do think that we both gave each other equally challenging yeah. pens. Yeah, um, we went some different routes. But yeah, we had because I will. I will admit, like these, I think that while we carried. The, most of the pens that I chose, they were difficult. They like, were more obscure. The, the ascent yeah. definitely was challenging because it, it is a very simple pen. There's yeah. not a whole lot of clues. Yeah. Um, but uh, that is a good one. And we just talked about it too. That's why yeah. I'm kicking I'm myself. I'm really surprised you got the Quebeco original. Like I wouldn't have gotten this one. I'm like, no? I, I would. No, I, I feel like I've picked mm. up this pen maybe once before today. Wow. I've never okay. written with one. Okay. Um, like I would, I would be kicking myself because I'd be like, this feels like a Quebeco, but it's too big. Like, mm. and. I don't even know if I was certain it was metal or not. So, yeah. It's very light. Yeah. Cool. All right. Good choices. Good choices. There we go. That was fun. All right. That was fun. Cool. Well, hopefully you all enjoyed that. We had fun at least. <laughs> all right. I need to get my notes out here. What do we have next, Drew? Uh, next up is what's the, happening. The goof off time. Yeah. All right. Well, let's do it then. All right. Um, so, yeah, I had a pretty packed weekend, Brian. Um, okay. So Friday was a half day. Uh, we had the choice to either go to a baseball game or not. And uh, while I would love to spend time with my friends here, I did opt to kind of self 
preserve and have some alone time, which I thought I needed. And I'm very appreciative. I was able to get that and get paid for it somehow. Um, so I went home, I actually had to go by the grocery store real quick and get Shannon some ingredients for a, uh, a spinach dip that she makes whenever we go to parties. So mm. I went and got, uh, got that stuff and then went home and I sat down and watched the uh, most recent Ant-Man movie, Qu Quantum Mania. The and most recent, there's more than one. This is the third one. The third one? Third Ant-Man, wow, yeah. Wow, respect yeah. on that franchise. Paul Rudd, man, who would have thought that this would have been like- the Man big, never ages. His, his like- Talking about time machines, that yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just sat down, I, you know, when I'm like watching a movie, I take the love sack and I pull it out from the corner and put it right in front of the TV and I get cozy up in that thing. I have my, you know, I bring the carafe of coffee in so I can refill right there in front wow. of the TV. It's a whole thing. I shut the lights off. The dogs are put away. Um, sometimes I put my headphones on. It was quiet enough in the house that I didn't have to do that, but wow. it was just a it's nice like a little- full immersion experience I, yeah, here. I like, there aren't a lot of things I can do mm and be totally focused on and be sitting still without mm. fiddling or fidgeting. Sure. Watching movies for some reason, I can still do. Mm. And I always have been able to, which is very uncommon for me because I can't do anything without fidgeting or twitching right. or getting distracted. But yeah. for whatever reason, a, a good movie can, I can lose myself in it. And I just mm. love to do that. The opportunities don't often come along though. So when I have them, I really do appreciate them. So nice. um, it was a good movie. Um, and, uh, the uh, the villain, uh, Jonathan Majors, is an actor who is um, not having a good PR time right now. Uh -oh. um, he is, uh, you know, there, there are some pretty horrendous accusations against him. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate because I think Marvel was kind of banking on him to be like the next Thanos level villain. Oh boy. And he was a very talented actor. He was very good in this movie, but yeah. I don't know if he's going to come back. Okay. Yeah, so he might be gone. We'll see how that plays out. But either mm -hmm. way, the movie was enjoyable. Um, very CG heavy. So I don't know how good it's going to look in a couple of years, but you mm. know, it was fun. It was what I expected. Yeah. You had Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Like <laughs> the name. Like if you go in there and you're surprised by what you see, right? You weren't really yeah. paying attention. You haven't seen many movies. Um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I did that. That was good. Um, interestingly enough, I was not going to attend my wife's cast party for her. Um, you know, every every time they do a little local theater production, sure, they sure. have a cast party. And I wasn't going to go because mm. it started after the show, which is at 10 p.m. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And that would mean That's I would late. bring Archer two hours after his bedtime to oh another gosh. location. Like he would have been miserable. So wow. I wasn't yeah. gonna do that. Mm -hmm. um, interesting, interestingly enough though, our friends who um, their son is Archer's best pal. Mm -hmm. Like they used to go to um, daycare together back when they were in like preschool, kindergarten. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, they went separate ways, but we still hang out with them. Archer gets to see Sal every now and then, but uh, not like a school friend, kind of like a other friend. Yeah. Uh, he apparently was not having a good week at school, you know, mm. getting picked on and stuff like that, or, you know, had some issue with a friend that he thought was a friend. So mm. they actually reached out to Shannon and said, hey, would it be okay if Archer stayed the night? Because I think he really needs like- He needs a friend. He needs a real, yeah. real. So I thought that was just the most touching, beautiful mm. thing they could have done for him. That's and cool. of course, Archer was absolutely, let's let's do it. So mm. um, we got to do that. So Archer went over their house for the night and I got to attend the cast party. Oh, cool. So, um, so that was good. Uh, there was a lot of people there. Yeah. Uh, I had planned, believe it or not, on getting in the hot tub there. Like, I don't normally do that. Wow. Uh, but Shannon said, Drew, I, I was like, yeah, I'll get in the hot tub. Really? You will? I'm like, yeah. And I got my swim trunks out. She's like, you need new swim trunks. Those things, uh -oh. no. I don't, there's, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just old. I've had them since I think I met her probably. They're just... <laughs> Very like <laughs> 2004 looking okay. shorts. You know, they've got like brown, light blue and mm -hmm. like gray. Board short type yeah, styling. You know, you know, like yeah. whatever. It doesn't matter. Probably she, similar to the ones that I have. Because I don't buy new ones. I don't ones. use them ever. So she's mm. like, no, you need to get new ones. After you drop me off at the theater, you're not going to be doing anything anyway. Go to Target. Look for some shorts. I'm like, all right, wow. fine. Okay. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not attached to them, but I understand they definitely don't. <laughs> they look a certain way. So I did go to Target, found just the cheapest ones they had. Yep. They're blue, just flat blue. No, they're like teal, I guess. Yeah. Um, no, nothing on them. Just 
whatever target brand, Goodfellow or whatever Target yeah. has. You oh, know? yeah, I've got some Goodfellow. So I was like, all right, there we go. Got some shorts. <laughs> uh, but then I get there, and there's a lot of people there, a lot of people in the pool, a lot of people mm. in the hot tub. But I'm like, ah, I think there might be some spots in the hot tub. Shannon's already in there. So I'm like, all right, let's go. And I walk out to the hot tub, and there's like, a ton of people in there. Yeah. And then I had to be awkward and just turn around and leave. And they're all just like, hey, what are you doing? Come on, it's okay. We'll You're make like, room. I'm like, mm, nope, 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 nope. And it's one of those things that like- You, you know, ha- touching yeah. feet and Dude, other things. Like you can't right. see what's going on Let me just there. tell you, this hot tub, all four corners were taken up and three yeah. middle places. How big is this hot tub? It's just a standard hot tub. You know, you've got the four corner seats and then like these kind of middle seats if you, if you had to. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's too many feet. That's a lot of feet. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. That's that's, that's human soup. That's people soup. I don't want to be in people soup. It is kind of crazy. I thought there were fewer people in there. Gross to begin with. I'm I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm I'm like at four corners max. Like that that that's yeah. enough. Four people's that that's already max. So yeah, I'm like I don't want to touch a stranger's feet in a hot tub. I mean, I that's knew everybody, like, no. but not like that well. Not Still, like footsy well. That's like a different level of getting in yeah <laughs> yeah but i was all excited because i was like in the one time i'm actually in the mood to yeah. you know go out there did you take the tags off the shorts like did you have to keep the shorts yeah but i mean i that, guess you needed them anyway that's though, fine right? yeah okay so yeah i just kind of stood around and talked in your shorts i felt i met i met uh <laughs> in your plain blue shorts yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> so i still i never actually i still had my t-shirt but um now i found yeah. some fellow introverts and chatted inside away go. from everybody else so go. yeah it worked out go. how many people are at this party like there must be a ton it was it's a whole cast and crew, yeah right? cast the crew and plus ones wow so, so yeah like 50 60 people probably no not quite that many no not that i many? don't think i okay. don't know i don't i can't count okay the pool is also full of people so i don't know maybe okay. no not 50 uh-huh. at least 20 um it's a good number of people but uh yeah you know just I can't remember last time i went to party with that many people yeah like our team party probably. yeah josh yeah. jeffrey's house is really open as mm-hmm. far as the floor plan area goes like mm-hmm. you know they built it to entertain so it's got yeah, you know true, true. it's kind of hard to tell <laughs> uh but yeah so did that on uh, friday night um also uh, it, i was you know in introvert mode uh working on my phone because i made a list of my top 20 favorite movies no i have no reason why i did it but i wanted i'm like i'm gonna make my top 20 movies i'm gonna share it on instagram for no reason. Okay. So yeah, I, I started with a list. Makes of like, sense. You're a movie guy. I just you like, know I you're like, into it. You know me. I like I like talking about things that I like. Sure. Like with like just just today, I'm like talking about food habits and random. You know, like oh, yeah. hey, which fast food do you like? I, the more you talk about things you like, the more you'll eventually find somebody that also likes the thing you like, and yeah. it's, it's just it's just nice. But anyway, uh, top twenty movies, and I actually made a list that I was semi comfortable with, which is okay. a big deal because it took me a long time. I, I had a, like a running document on my, mm. on my phone that I just like add stuff to for a couple okay. months. And then eventually okay. I whittled it down to about 35 and I said, I think I can get 20 out of this. Wow. So I did it. Um, top, top one. Do you have it? Do you want to guess what my top, my top favorite movie Your is? Number one. Yeah. It's Rocky. Very close. That was number four. Okay. Ghostbusters. Uh, Ghostbusters. Okay. Back to the future. Karate Kid. Rocky. Okay. Yep. That's on brand. Yep. Yeah. That makes yep. sense. I had to pick, I, I had a rule that I could only pick one per franchise. Oh. Because otherwise it would just be full of Star Wars and Marvel. Right. Know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay. but for Rocky, I had to pick Rocky 2. Okay. Because Rocky 1 is just straight up drama. Sure. Rocky 3, just 80s goofiness. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mr. T and Hulk Hogan are in that one. It's fantastic. So Rocky 2 <laughs> is like a little bit a nice blend of both. Yeah. Like not 80s goofiness, but not strict drama like the first one. So yeah. I was like, that's the one I'm going to pick because okay. it's a nice bridge between the yeah. two. To represent the franchise especially. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So okay. yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty fun to, to go through and nice. do that as an exercise. Do you have the Expendables on there? Was that on the list? No, because that's a great, that's a great uh, question. Because um, you love that movie. I do. There's a lot of like not so great movies that I love. And <laughs> when I decided for myself, in order to help, you know, arbitrary rules, to help me narrow it down, okay. I did decide to eliminate ones that most people would say are bad films. You know, even though I like, like them, critically bad. Yeah, okay. critically bad films. Like I, rot- I, Rotten Tomato style. You know, yeah, movie, you know, kind of bad. Yeah, there, there might have been one or two that because it is subjective. I mean, what's yeah, you know. but it did help me narrow it down because okay. I like a lot of movies that uh, are not that great. You know? Okay, sorry, Weekend at Bernie's two didn't make the cut. Okay. Um, so I did that. Uh, we met up with our friends the next morning to sw- you know, pick up our kid. So we had mm-hmm. brunch with them. Um, so that was nice. And then, um, yeah, went home and uh, crossed some things off my tour list. 
which oh. wasn't fun, but it was a nice day on Saturday. Oh my so, gosh, this weekend was beautiful. Yeah, so yeah. I got outside, um, I washed both the cars, vacuumed um, my, the uh, black CRV, which nice. desperately needed it. But we had bought a new dog vacuum because we needed one with a HEPA filter for Shannon because her eyes were starting to get all swollen up whenever yeah. we vacuumed. Mm -hmm. um, and that vacuum, it was a shark. It's a shark uh, mm -hmm. canister vacuum. Okay. Um, yeah, and yeah. the the handle thing can disconnect in two places. You can disconnect it at the base where the vacuum module is right. or up at the top where the handle yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. And for the uh, back, you know, it's a hatchback. Um, for the back, I disconnected the handle thing uh -huh. and connected it to the vacuum thing at the bottom. Oh, yeah. So, so you're it was like, just a like taking out the extension. Yeah. I, so yeah. it's just like a little handheld yeah. vacuum. I'm like, this is super handy. It's a game changer for car vacuuming. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So That's I awesome. loved that. I didn't I didn't expect to be using it for that when we bought it, but because that vacuum kind of annoyed me at first. Like, I don't know if I love the whole canister thing. Mm. You're dragging it around. It's getting yeah. Cold. It takes some getting used to. But now I'm like, okay. It's like you're wrangling an alien. This was like, yeah. This know? made like the, the car <laughs> vacuum situation made it great. So I was okay. actually really happy with that. Nice. Um, I had a rear windshield wiper blade that's been sitting in my laundry room for months mm -hmm. where my back windshield wiper blade, like the, the rubber had completely pulled you off. You don't want to use it anymore because it's going to be like metal, like scratching yeah, the Yeah, so glass. I don't use it. Um, but <laughs> right. I, but yet I didn't install the new one. You I, have the new blade. I have it. It's there. It takes like 30 seconds. I know. <laughs> it's so stupid. So I finally did that. Yeah. <laughs> It is gratifying so, to do that type of stuff where you're just like. I got to cross off three things, things off my list. That's awesome. I crossed off that, you know, wash car, install wiper blade. And then something had happened. I don't know if it was the uh, um, grass cutting people or what, but on the side of my deck, the plastic lattice that I had screwed onto mm -hmm. the deck so the dogs don't get out yeah. um, had been just plowed in hmm. and like ripped right off the screws hmm. and folded into the under deck area where my kayaks are. Interesting. Um, I feel like a lawnmower would have been the only thing oh, strong enough sense. to do that. Somebody just like rammed like it into Like backed it. into it yeah, or something it like that. Be. So I re-screwed, okay. you know, that into the deck too because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that looked really, really trashy. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, yeah, did some, did some planting stuff. Got my herbs out of my seed starting tray into some outdoor containers. And uh, and one indoor container. I've got basil inside and outside. Now I'm going to experiment to see which one nice. makes basil happier. Okay, I got some basil going too. Yeah, I got well, two different types of basil going. No, so one's see. in the bay window and one is outside on the porch. <clears throat> right. And then Sunday, uh, I asked Archer if he wanted to watch a movie with me, mm -hmm. and I was thinking, you know, maybe we'd do like uh, uh, Princess Bride because we were talking about that, and I'm like, maybe I need to watch Princess Bride again. He did not. He was not interested in Princess Bride at all, even after I described it to him. Mm. Uh, and I was like, well, how about Mighty Ducks? That was cool when I was a kid. He's like, no, nah, I don't care about that. He said, what about Indiana Jones? And I was like, okay, I love Indiana Jones. That was in my top 20 yeah. list. Okay. But I had also re watched it recently, but whatever. I'm not going to say no to Indiana Jones. Okay. So um, I said, how I think Last Crusade would probably be the best one for you. It's yeah. the less freaky of Had the he not three. seen that before? He hadn't seen any of them. Oh, um, okay. So I asked Shannon, I was like, there's a pretty heavy makeout scene. Should I skip that? And she's like, no, no, we don't want to make it like even more weird by like making it a you shouldn't see this sort of thing. I mean, mm. you might you'll probably close his eyes, like, you know, but whatever. I was like, okay. Um, so there's the heavy duty makeout scene, mm. and then there's the man Just, man who gets old and explodes from drinking the wrong holy grail at the end scene. Oh, so yeah. Like, one of these oh, is... Oh, Last Crusade. I was thinking Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first one. Now, Raiders is the face melting. Yeah, and the pit of snakes. Yeah. Which is like, yeah. literally that movie will never cross the barrier. Yeah. Well, there's also there's also a snake scene. There's also a snake scene in Last Crusade because there's that... That's true. There's that uh, uh And in back. Temple of Doom, too, when they like are having the... You oh, yeah, you're right. Jeez, yeah, they, what is it with the snakes? They love them some snakes yeah. in those movies, yeah. So I was like, one of those two things is going to freak him out. Or okay. both. Yeah. Um, and it's got to grow up sometime. Yep. So <laughs> yeah, he hated the makeout scene. Okay. He was like, that is disgusting. <laughs> that is one of the most disgusting things As I've a ever kid, seen. It is kind of objectively a little yeah. bit strange. You're like, like, why are they mashing their faces into well, each other? Well, she was, she was, I think she actually went after uh, Harrison Ford's ear lobe at some point too. Oh, but okay. Yeah. So I'm like, yep, yeah, I, I can understand how you feel that way. But the end when the guy like freaks out and his hair growing, he's like, ah, and explodes. He was fine with it. He was fine with that? I mean, that was pretty he, freaky. I mean, I he was, that, I, know, I was a little concerned with it. He was like, he was yeah. like, Ugh. you know, but that was it. Nothing, nothing dramatic. Maybe he, it just like looks so fake now compared maybe, to like other. Maybe like, I remember movies. it giving me bad dreams, but I did too. He's but... never had like bad dreams as a result of 
like a scary movie oh, or a you know movie. very like a Marvel movie or anything like that. But okay. uh, yeah, he'd apparently rather see heads explode than people making out. <laughs> That'll so, change. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we did time. that. And then after that, I took him uh, took him up to the school to let him ride his bike a little bit. So uh, it was, again, beautiful day. Nice. Um, very beautiful day. And then uh, we both went back to the theater so that I could assist with the uh, final. Um, they did their final show at Shannon's Theater, and we struck the set. So, mm. you know, I brought the drill, and we just took down everything. Nice. I contribute to those situations because I know that uh, Shannon won't really – do a whole lot so <laughs> archer just sat in the audience and supporting. played, played yeah. his tablet and shannon hid backstage i don't know where yep. <laughs> helped move light objects there so you go. yeah but uh um, takes a village yeah we did that nice and um yeah overall pleasant busy weekend but yeah, nice. i got some game time in there here and there cool it was satisfying Awesome. Sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Overall. The weather was so nice. It was, it was a like, nice one. Yeah. Having nice weather just makes such a big difference. Yeah. We walked to the school this time instead of, oh. so I let him ride his bike on the, in, in the neighborhood. Um, nice. And he, he did well. Is he liking his new bike? He's loving it. That's awesome. Yeah. He's loving it. We, we, we noticed, uh, you know, it's just the cheap Walmart Huffy, but uh, you know, he's, it, yeah. it does the job, but we've noticed when, whenever I drop him off at school, there's a kid that obviously lives in a nearby mm -hmm. um, subdivision who bikes to school and he's got the same bike so we call him huffy bro um <laughs> so every morning we're like yep nice. huffy bro nice yeah that's awesome i don't know if he knows him or not but if he does he's gonna be like yeah i know you you're huffy bro they know each other like in their souls mm. the huffy bro <laughs> that's right it's funny it's like i wonder if that kid has a name for archer you know probably not because he just sees him he's it's just a black car oh okay yeah okay i just drive i just drive gotcha yeah fair enough what about you? What'd you get um, into? Sort gosh. of malarkey, tomfoolery, nonsense, I like I, horseplay. I feel like I've been pretty boring lately. Good. Um, Rachel's parents came into town, so we got to hang out with them a bit. Nice. Um, so just lots of good family time, playing board Should games, take out things to the club. like that. Out to the club? Yeah. The club. Yeah, did you party at the club? I don't know this club of which yeah. you speak. If the I've been to one club in my life with Rachel. Uh, two, I guess two clubs. The only club I really remember was one I did, went to with Rachel. How'd and that we were, go? <laughs> not great. <laughs> like I bet you just felt I think right. We went, at there, home. we went there like with my sister. I think we were already married at that point, and we were just like, "What's the point of this?" Yeah, I guess people do this. Let's go. You know, like, if I was single and I didn't know where to meet people, maybe. But it was like this is before they like banned smoking everywhere and stuff yeah. like that, and it was just like smoky oh, yeah. and just gross people dancing everywhere, and I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna do this anymore. <laughs> that was a long yeah. time ago. I went, I went yeah. once. It was at Universal Studios, and okay, I was with some friends, and we we're like, "Oh, there's a club here." Yeah, I'm I like, think, I think the only time I remember going to a club was at like the Disney uh, before they shut it all down, like the Pleasure Island. Or yeah, whatever, yeah, which is like. It's Disney. You yeah. know, it's like whatever. I mean it was very bright and loud and I'm like, this looks it looked like a club from it's the club. movies. Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay, this this is what they look like in the movies. Yeah. Can we go now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, shocking that the fountain pen people wouldn't be as into the clubs. <laughs> um no. So yeah, Rachel's parents came into town, so we just, you know, kind of chilled. I did a lot of chores, outdoor stuff. We use the RC car a lot. Her dad nice. is like super into it. Did so, you build any more like uh, ramps or anything? That any... ramp that I threw together is still holding up. Nice. I thought for sure that we would have destroyed that thing by now. I've got it's got a couple of cracks in it yeah. because you know we're. I built it to be like it's like a width of a full sheet of plywood, so it's like four feet long and it's probably five feet wide, and then I kind of bent it a little bit. Right. So it's a pretty good size, but when you're trying to sling an RC car onto it, it seems small when you're trying to like hit that specific target. Yeah. So definitely like- Also your perspective is weird because you're just, you're on the same level as the car. It is weird, yeah. And especially because like, if you have the car coming towards you, when you steer, it's like the opposite Backwards, direction, yeah. you know? So it's like, as you're driving the car around, it just takes a lot of practice. You know to what you need to get? You need to get a camera on that thing that so you thing. can see first person. I mean, that's a thing that people do. I know they, they do, do it with drones, yeah. They do, for sure, yeah. FPV racing, it's that's a real how you thing. Go. That's how you do it, but, hit that mark every time. Yeah, you could do that, but you know, whatever. I'm just goofing around. Mm. But I will say, the car is holding up well. Nice. We are, I'm not babying that thing. I am flinging it. What's gonna be the next thing you'll probably have to replace? Oh, I don't know. I'm beating up the body pretty good. Yeah. But I reinforced it. So I used um, 
you know, that, like mesh tape that you can use on like cement board or fiber, like drywall, like that kind of, you know, if you have like a hole and you don't know what I'm talking about. Nope. But it's like a mesh plastic tape. So if you're, if you're trying to lay tile or something and you put like cement board underneath that, over the cracks, you put this like mesh tape hmm. and then you like mortar over it and it just helps to like bind the mortar, right? So I've seen like I a drywall patch. Tape. Yeah, it's but, that same kind of okay. concept. Yeah. yeah, so it's just like a mesh kind of open looking tape. So I put that all in the inside of the RC car and then put this like glue caulk type stuff. Oh, wow. To like reinforce the inside of the the, the cover. Oh, dang. So you so kind of like created, can hold up, yeah. you basically created fiberglass uh, more or less, it's not it's not as rigid as fiberglass, but it definitely like reinforces it quite a yeah. bit. So it can take a beating pretty oh, good. Right. I'm still I'm still banging it up pretty good, but it's it's holding up a lot better than if I had not done that. Um, I haven't broken any other parts on it though, so that's good. Sounds like you made a wise first investment then. If you think so, if you've ridden Got it hard good, like this, and, yeah, because a cheaper one probably would have been destroyed by now. Yeah, we're 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 the kids are a little gentler with it than I am, but I'm just like. Let's see what this thing can do. Yeah. I think we. Uh, That's all for you. The furthest I've measured that thing, I think I've launched it. It's gone about 30 feet of distance in the air. In the jump? Yeah. Oh just with God. that little ramp that I built. Yeah. Jeez. So it's pretty fun. Oh yeah. my God. I'm getting pretty good at like jumping it because you can like, when you jump it, when you, you know, when you spin the tires in the air, you can like cant the car back and forth. So you try to, you want to try to land it on all four yeah. wheels. You know, so it's like if it goes up in the air, if it's tilting too far back, uh -huh. you just hit the reverse and it'll like the torque from the. Really? The, yeah. So well, just you, like the video games. Some, yeah. If you get some decent air, you can actually jump it up and then you can like stabilize like those, it mid air. The, yeah. It's like all those like racing mm -hmm. video games where yeah. it's parallel, like the yeah, dirt exactly. bike racing games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what? it takes, takes a little practice, but yeah, you can do that. I didn't know that was real. Yeah. So having fun with that. So just like, you know, letting Joseph do it and do a bunch of jumps and taking like slow-mo video of it and showing it to him. It's like, you know, just goofy stuff like that. Nice. Just having a good time. And then, uh, so that's pretty fun. Um, what else did we do? Uh, so, you know, we were just kind of looking for like random projects and what not to do around the house. And uh, my father-in-law loves woodworking and, you know, I've got a shop for that. So yep. I've been talking for a long time about building something on the Pencast that I actually got started this weekend. So I started building a chessboard. Nice. So that is in process. And I have a picture that I can you know, certainly share, but I'll show you just so you kind of understand what I'm talking Very about. Very cool. But um, I decided not to like overcomplicate it because I've watched quite a few videos on how to do it. And I very oh, much that looks beautiful. understand in principle. So what wood are we looking at here? So I went walnut and maple. Mm, so just classic. simple. It's just solid wood. I'm not like getting into laminating and all these crazy things. So basically just cut the wood into strips. So, you know, I had some some chunks of wood. I had to cut them to the, to the right you know, thickness, mm -hmm. which is about five eighths of an inch or so. I actually, I took the like, I have like a roll out, like f foamy, like travel, you know, uh, type chessboard mm -hmm. that we use for the kids, which is nice because I can keep it all rolled up with the pieces. Um, so I just like measured how big those squares were. Cause I even, I'm researched cause like when you start to build something, it's like, how big do you make a chessboard? It's like, you have to, you have to make it to a specific dimension. Mm -hmm. And apparently there's not like one universal dimension that's used for chess piece, no, piece sizes depends, or yeah. chess boards or whatever. So you can make them Doesn't really miniature matter. or big or whatever. I mean, there's some standards for like competition, you know, so there's like an international standard for certain competitions and stuff. But basically there's, there's a whole bunch of different types you could make. Excuse me. So I just took the pieces that I already had, which match up to the board that we already have of that like rollout one. And then I was like, well, I'll just take the measurements of that. So nice. that's what we based it off of. So is this all you, is this all you're going to need? You just well, I'll show you. So um, I got two pictures here. So this first one is just doing like a laminated kind of glue up. So right. it's just straight up wood. Um, basically, you cut them and, you know, make them really, really precisely, you know, kind of smoothed on the edge so that they made up really tight to each other. And you just alternate the colors of whatever mm -hmm. you're going to do. So you glue all that up into one panel. And then basically, once the glue dries, you turn it 90 degrees cut it the other way right so you end up with strips of alternating color flip them around and that gives you your your checkerboard pattern so that's <gasps> oh my what, gosh you're already done like so far basically i mean i think i'm gonna like maybe do a little bit of a chamfer around the edge um but I, you know i was thinking about doing a border or whatever and i was like no that's kind of cool i think i'll just leave it just yeah. natural edge like that um and then so i'll do a little bit of chamfer around the edge and chamfer is just then, like an angle 
Yeah, it's right? like a it's like a square cut. Like you know, you can either like round it over, or a chamfer is more like a straight cut yeah. that you do. Um, so I think I'm going to do that, just not anything too crazy. Um, and then basically, I just have to like sand it and finish it, and then I'm pretty That's much awesome. ready to go. So very simple. Then you get to carve your own pieces. Yeah, I'm just going to use the pieces that we already have. For now, for now. I could see carving my own pieces. Yeah. That would be kind of fun. Yeah, but if you ever get falsely accused for murder and end up in Shawshank Prison, <clears throat> need to find some soapstone, stuff like that. It's, yeah, it's my plan. You talk to somebody who can get plan. you things. Yeah, so, I don't know. It's kind of cool. I did not go into the weekend thinking I was going to start making a chessboard. It was but, a matter of time, though. I mean, I've had it, like, in the wings, right? And so when I was just, like, throwing out ideas, because I have, like, you know, I've made, like, pocket knives, you know, where it's like I buy the knife part and I make like the wooden staves that you glue onto the side. Yeah, yeah. So I have like th kit things like that for like when family members come over or if I want to make a gift for somebody. So I had all these things and he was kind of like, yeah, we kind of done that. And I was like, well, I've been thinking about making a chessboard. And he, and he was like, hey, really? Let's, uh, and so I was like, all right, if I got a helper, you know, let's, let's just give it a shot. Nice. So I'm glad you did that. That's yeah, really cool. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. Will I actually use it? Who knows? You know, it's less convenient, certainly, than, like, the roll-up kind that you can easily store away. It's, like, you know, this big piece of wood that I've got, like, haul in and out. But, yeah, you know, it's also, like... It's prettier. It's more stout. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be... Yeah, so maybe just the fact that it, like, looks nicer. Yeah, you, know, you can live like on a that. coffee It'll table. feel more special. Yeah, I mean, we usually end up playing, like, at the kitchen table where we, like, all the action happens. Mm. So, I don't know, that might need to have, like, its own home somewhere. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But I mean, if anything, you can display it somewhere around here. I could, yeah. That's kind of a given of like any random crap I make that Rachel doesn't want to keep around the house anymore. I can always just bring it into the office. Yeah. And it's special because I made it, I guess. And everybody has to say that it's special. You got to screw it to the wall back here. Eventually <laughs> it'll right. look like a That's right. TGI Fridays back here or a Cracker Barrel. That's right. Really like, are you, is your Pencast Studio Applebee's? <laughs> That's right. You're like, no, Brian just has a lot of different <laughs> hobbies. And Rachel's sick of storing his junk. Oh my gosh. That is kind of what my house looks like, though. It's like a TGI Fridays, <laughs> uh, especially my sheds. Oh my god! Random giant letters nailed to the wall. Yeah. Oh, it's an R. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> what you does know? that mean? It means R. I found it on the side of the road. I had pulled things out of dumpsters before at the dump, and brought it back home. To I know. I know. Weld things. I know and, this about yeah. you. Yes. It happens. But anyway, so yeah, I feel like I, I'm like I had to have done more than that, but that's probably all the interesting things that I did. Yeah, I wrote down my stuff pretty soon after I did it, so the mm. memory was fresh, but yeah. uh, I probably would have forgotten otherwise. My stuff is more subtle. Yeah. yeah. Just good family time. There we go. So, cool. A um, couple quick on the updates, and then we'll wrap this episode up. All right. Well, um, we are going to be closed this coming Monday for Memorial <gasps> Day. Ooh, what so are you going to do? I thought that was worth a mention. We are going to have Rachel's sister's family you need to stop having so much family over that sounds we exhausting you got a lot of family happening i'm yeah. tired just thinking about it it'll be fun four, i'm exhausted four kids in the house i need to take a i need a vacation from brian having so much visitors yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be fun good memories will be made that i will say and the weather's gonna be nice we're we're thinking about like because like the pools start to open up in memorial day so it's like do we go to like a pool? Do we go to like King's Dominion theme mm, park? Mm. Something like that. So we're debating. We're like, it'll that be packed. Also, sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. I don't know if we want to do that. So yeah. we're gonna kind of play it by ear. But swimming may be swimming may happen. Cool. At some point. I could yeah, I could go over a friend's house, but they have too many friends and people just show up. <laughs> like, like you? <laughs> No, because there's aren't too many friends. The, yeah. Aren't you one of the friends that would be showing up to their, to their I house? Am. Yeah. yeah. But I don't count. My parents live in like a like a condo type place, yeah. and they've got a pool. But like, there's no kids there. It's like, you know, my parents. Yeah, it's not an age restricted community, but it's like a age leaning, you know, towards retiree. That type sounds perfect. Community. Yeah, so they have a pool, and it's seldom crowded. So we'll go probably go. bring a bunch of kids over there, and they'll all be like. There it's so noisy. But they you might need there. to update those swimsuits because <laughs> your kids have a problem with growing. That's a you know that's a good point. Mm -hmm. My kids are they're not stopping. No, they're not slowing down. No, so. they'll get to the point where we're like we can just give them our old suits and they'll fit into <laughs> it because like they're getting to that point. Um, yeah, all right. You you make me want to double check my own suit now because like it's kind of been a while since I've even thought about it. I mean, I'm not gonna throw my old one away, but you know, it's always good to have a backup. You know, I don't. I, you don't want to feel like go to the beach or something, and you're like, 
Yeah, like you know, I don't mind. You don't want a constantly wet bathing suit. My my thing is like I don't mind attention being drawn to me if like, look, I'm wearing a space shirt. Yes, pay attention to me. Look at my solar system shirt. Whatever. Right. But like, I don't want anybody being like, wow, 2002 called. They wanted their swim trunks back. Like, that's a different sort of attention that maybe I oh, don't yeah. want right now. <laughs> I definitely have some. I don't know if I have any. My, my swim trunks from that long ago do not fit me anymore. Otherwise, I totally would still have that. They're pretty stretchy. But I totally had, like, the board shorts with, like, They go down to your strong, knees. Like, oh, yeah. Strong, whole, like, hibiscus flying, plants. Flying, oh, like, yeah. flower print oh, yeah, on them. They're, like, yellow and blue. Yeah, mm. absolutely. With, like, the rivets in the pockets oh, and that yeah. whole thing. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. I like that. I like that era. That's but there was like no built-in like they were like shorts. They weren't like they didn't have a built-in, you know, underwear type support. So you'd have to like wear underwear yeah, with the board, board shorts. Yeah, they still sell those too. Yeah, and I would like, like ruin, what's the point of that? I would like ruin my underwear. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I speaking of that era of clothing, I almost got kicked out of my house the other day because I told Shannon um because I found an old jean jacket on Poshmark.com to add okay. add patches to yeah. for another patch jacket. Yeah. Um it was only twenty bucks. I'm like, yeah, Poshmark is cool. Yeah. So I thought to myself, like, man, I had a pair of flare leg jeans I got from Express sometime in like 2006. Oh, nice. I would like to have those again. And I told Shannon, I found them. And she looked at me like, I know you're not thinking about buying What's wrong with flare leg jeans. No, I, I don't know. Nothing. They look cool. I think so. She gave me a look, Brian, and it was not pleasant. Wow. And I said, they are $50, but she's like, Ooh, oh, okay. okay. That's, I know. That's a little beyond an For impulse. used jeans. <laughs> Buying mm. used pants for fifty dollars. I don't pay. I don't pay that much for new pants. I know. Neither do I. <laughs> neither do I. I buy jeans from Old Navy for twenty dollars that fall apart after a year. That's my strategy. It's yeah. Terrible. Sounds like a solid plan. Yeah, but uh, you know, <laughs> ah, I love those jeans. They're not like bell bottoms, but they just have a little bit of a flare. A yeah, boot, boot cut. Like no, a they're, strong they're, boot no, cut. No, strong boot cut. Yes, yeah. they're yeah. a strong um, boot. Cut. Yeah, <laughs> a liberal boot. <laughs> a, very, cut. Yeah. a very big boot. A very loose boot. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. I thought flare jeans were cool. I don't know. Interesting. It's not like I'm asking her to wear, you know, elephant jinkos or something. Come oh, on. Yeah, the pipe pipe stem yeah, jeans or whatever they're called. Bad. Yeah. Those are pretty crazy. Mm. I never had any quite like that. No, I certainly didn't. I always like the carpenter jeans. I, yeah. I like accessories, pockets, things to hang stuff on. Yeah. I had a couple yeah. carpenter I had I had utility like like cargo jean shorts. Yeah, in the, in the now we're talking mid '90s too. Heck yeah, Woo. ain't nothing wrong with this. With like Velcro, yeah. like flaps on them. Yes, God. Yes, Ooh. I want hooks, hooks, yes. and zippers, carry and all pockets, the hammers, everything, double hammers, hammers, hardware. <laughs> I want to be able to carry hardware, sorted, sorted hardware in various pockets in my shorts. Basically, a tool belt. Those things are. I just want to wear a tool off. belt. A tool belt that wraps around my legs. That's pretty much. It's <laughs> pretty much what I view shorts as. Uh, you know, yeah. it's like a carpenter's yeah. tool belt that wraps around my legs. There we go. Yeah, I like it. I'm for it. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, I don't know. Company updates. Company updates. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Wow, we really went on Sorry, a journey that was my with fault. that one. Yeah, it was. I asked you what you were doing. That's all right. Um, and then we. If I do my part and actually review the stuff I'm supposed to review, we're going to be publishing the first of our Fountain Pen 101 revamp series. So we're really going to take not everything that we have in like the 26 Fountain Pen 101 videos that we did, but the best of what's in those. We're going to distill it. Distill them down to their essence into a series series of five videos that we're going to publish uh, basically from now throughout like the early summer, you know, probably every other week or so we're shooting to have one of these out. So put a lot more time and effort into these, try to really get the best of information. Probably if you're yeah. watching this, you know, you're probably going to know most of what's already in these things. Yeah. But it's wanting to be especially helpful for people who are newer to found For everybody. Yeah. Which is also why you might have noticed that our video releases have been a little spotty these days. Yeah. We're spending some extra time on editing this one. We are. It's not going to be anything miraculous, but it is taking, it's 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 outside of our, you know, kind of Trying to cover a lot schedule. more like detail shots and things like that. Yeah. So you can see even better what's going on. So yeah. we are excited to be releasing that to the world. We've been wanting to do it for a while. What, 10 years since we did yeah, the original one? It's been one. a while. So we'll still leave the original ones up. There's, yeah. no, there's nothing wrong with them. No, it's not the, broken. The information's still good. It's just, you know, very dated. Now when I look back on it, I'm like, wow, 
I, uh, I look a lot younger in those videos now. <laughs> you could tell. Camera like, quality is definitely better. Camera quality, it was like, yep, I can definitely, and also see, there's, you can definitely see the grays that I've got coming in now. And There's uh, something about like watching an old <laughs> video with like, you can tell it's been shot a while ago. It almost, like, even if the mm. even if the information is correct, you still kind of like, yeah, is it though? Mm. Like it's just seeing a, you know, modern look is almost like, okay, I know, I, I trust this one a little bit more because I know it was done recently. This, yeah. It's like a subconscious I get thing. It. I yeah. get it, yeah. Anyway, we're excited for that, and uh, yeah, so look, look forward and let us know. Let us know what you think. If anybody's curious, I'm flipping around. Oh yeah, you didn't mention your coins. I'm you flipping got, yeah. around an 1874 seated Liberty half dollar mm. with a really funky looking bird on the back. It's a, it's a. I don't know about that eagle. It looks a little like it's freaking out. Got a lot going on. But it's cool. It's because half doll with a dot on there. That's not a super common. Interesting. Yeah, half doll. Half doll. Yeah, seated Liberty. So she's just kind of sitting. Chilling with a with a hat on a stick. Chilling Liberty. Yeah. Cool. So there you have that. There you go. I'm sure you were thinking the whole time, what coin does Drew have? I've been riding with a parallel, a 3.8 parallel that I have. You've actually been riding with that. I've ruined it because yeah, I I ground you it. Do? So you know. Oh. So so I can use it just like a regular pen now. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. You know, I saw you using that earlier. I didn't think much of it. But yeah, I left I my bag. Right, I left my bag at home. So this is the only fountain pen I had in my office. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, not like you can't get other fountain pens around here. No, this is the only one I had inked up. Oh, I see. Yeah. Hey. Which this is my fourth. Wait, no, no, it's not. It's the only third. I was gonna say, are you breaking I only have rules? two. I only have two inked up in my three pen sleeve gosh. right now. I have so many pens inked yeah. up. Yeah, cool. Well, there you go. That's company updates. And then we'll uh, wrap this thing up. Well, we want to thank you all for watching. Please leave us some feedback. Let us know how we're doing as we enter into the 90s here, the era of the more formative years of our childhood. Oh, I was super wrong about Trapper Keeper being in the, in the 90s, by the way. I got oh, called. really? Yeah, super wrong. A bunch of people in the comments. In, I thought you said it was in the 80s. In the well, I, I, we, I said, oh, yeah, when the Trapper Keeper came out, it kind of became the 90s, but Trapper Keeper was definitely an 80s thing, so I was super wrong about oh, that. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was still going strong. It was, it was, school. but it's definitely not a 90s thing. It, oh. it is an 80s thing. Okay. So, yeah. All right, all right, yeah. good. Yeah, I was corrected. born in 84, so I wasn't conscious for a good portion of the 80s of my Fair own enough. existence. Fair so. enough. Sorry. Coming of age. Um, let us know how we're doing. Um, ask us some questions, obviously, in the comments and email and stuff like that. Uh, you can check out gulepens.com for fountain pen, ink, paper, and all that good stuff. And I have a random fun fact that I should say it. I actually included it in part of one of the questions that we had for today. And I was like, you know what? This is not as relevant. And I can break it out separately. So it related to the shape of pens question. Yes. And it kind of diverted me because one of the pens that I was thinking about that was really interesting, I don't know if you remember, but when we went to Monograppa, he had some pen, I think it maybe was a Parker or something. There was some pen that he had that was like the biggest production pen ever made. Oh, yeah. Or something like that. Do you remember this It was thing? enormous. It was massive. It was like a mini baseball bat. Yeah. I don't remember specifically what the pen was. Some vintage something. Yeah, yeah I don't know. but it got me. So I sort of went down that hole. And as I was searching, trying to find the name of that pen, I found like largest fountain pen type stuff. So my fun fact is going to be about the largest fountain pen. Um, but I still did not find what that pen actually was. Okay. Well, I'll call that, it Giuseppe. And then I realized that like it's not that weird of a shape. It's just a big pen. Yeah. So I abandoned that, threw it in the fun fact. So... Um, apparently, so in my, my research took me to a couple different places. I will let you all decide what the biggest fountain pen is in the world. And I didn't search it all that exhaustively, to be honest with you, but the ones that I found, so there is a Guinness world record listing for the largest fountain pen made that goes back to 1991. So it is Zbigniew Rosanek. Not sure where he's from. Poland, maybe? Um, previously held the record for the longest pen that is not a ballpoint. So it was a fountain pen. Um, got it in 1991. Measured 7 feet 4 inches in diameter with a nib length of... Oh, sorry. 7 feet long, 4 inches in diameter with a nib length of 18 inches. So pretty weird dimensions. But either way, I didn't see a picture of it. I just saw the listing on the Guinness record site. So I was like, oh, that That's must, a previous record that must be the biggest pen. Well, then that led me to this other site, the World Record Academy. I don't know how legit this thing is, but they actually have a picture 
it's not a great picture, but mm. it's a picture of a nib that is more recent than 1991. Mm -hmm. So I'm just posing perhaps this is the biggest pen. I'm not sure. None of this. I mean, the Guinness is more official, I get because it's somewhat official, but I don't really know what World Record Academy is, but whatever. They're claiming it's the biggest. So apparently it's, um, the world record set by M.S. Akaria. Um, they're from India. So social studies teachers, M.S. Akaria, uh, age 50, commissioned the construction of a 40 kilogram, 16 foot tall, one foot wide brass pen that he calls the Bharatiya Pali, or India's pen, in honor of the government's passage of the right to education law, setting the new world record for the largest pen. So he didn't just make it to set a record, but he did it in honor of like an education like bill that they passed nice. in India, which I thought was kind of cool. Kind of cool. Um, so the work of making the world's largest pen was done by two uh, Hyder Hyderabad artists, uh, Ratnam and Mike. And sorry if I'm just butchering these names, uh, Malik Karajan who etched various uh, Indian dance series and musical instruments all over it. Started with sheets of brass, cut and soldered into 10 cylindrical structures. Basically, it's a very elaborate pen that they designed and everything. Um, took them 450 working hours and 250,000 rupees, which is about $5,500, uh, getting the pen right. So they took them like 56 days to make this thing. So Does it write? I don't. No. It should have to write. I don't know. I mm. don't know if they that be elaborate that. I feel like the other listing for the one from 1991 said that the pen weighed so much on its own and so much with ink in it. It didn't elaborate as to it writing. So I don't know. Maybe mm. uh, there's some more research out there. Or maybe these are both just bogus and there's some other pen that's the largest one. But I thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, 16 feet is pretty big. That is a pretty big pen. Maybe there's a world record for largest working fountain pen. I mean, certainly like largest production fountain pen would be yeah. one thing. So anyway, kind of curious. So I half researched some of the largest pens out there and thought it was worth sharing. That you did. With little confidence as to its validity. But the website seems kind of legit. It's a little outdated. I don't know how much I trust it, but... Yeah, well, I feel like we should appreciate things. we should approach everything on the internet with that sort of skepticism. Fair enough. Well done. There you go. Well, anyway, that's all we got for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching, and right on.